Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the pod. We've got Colby Thickness. Pro MMA fighter as of, what, six months ago, was it? Uh, November 2020. Wow. I turned pro, yep. Shit, the year is just flying. It's got crazy how quick it's gone, eh? Uh, yeah. It's so you started in November. That's right when COVID started. Was it what, COVID 2020? Um, yeah, no, that was like earlier. So. Yeah, COVID was... I actually remember it pretty well because I fought on the Gold Coast in March. I ended up doing a tournament, so I did three fights in three days. Shit. And then I came back the Sunday and then went into the gym Monday and that Friday was when everything actually shut down. So I was wow. very lucky to sort of get the get three fights in at the start of March. And then I think we shut down to like May or June. The first lockdown we had is ridiculous. Yeah, it was a big one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That how um have you done many tournaments leading up to that? Uh, jiu jitsu, yes, but MMA, no, that was my first time. So getting it was banged up and then oh <laughs> do man, it again. It was brutal, hey, because you'd have to. I uh, normally fight at bantamweight, so it's one thirty five or sixty one kilos, pretty much sixty one point yeah. seven or two depends. And that was my first time having to cut weight for the three days in a row because you f- weigh in, fight. Sort of rehydrate a bit, feel good, and then you have to cut again. So I ended up Shit, doing that. Really? Yeah. So I ended up doing that sixty-six kilos. So I ended up fighting Friday. I got stitched up with a bracket too, which is funny because there was seven of us, so one person would automatically get the buy. Yeah. So I ended up fighting the toughest guy, like the number one seed. How it worked off points first, then I had the second toughest guy. In, on the second day But he yeah. came off a buy So he was fresh oh. And I was already Pretty beat up And had to cut weight On the yeah, first yeah. day already But as soon as I got through That second day I sort of knew like, I was like The hardest part's over My new opponent Had two fights as well So I can sort of I felt pretty comfortable with it But the cutting weight Was horrible Because We'd have to get up At probably 6.30 To get a 7am wane yeah. And it'd have to be 65.8 Every morning So Jesus And I was yeah. gonna What's your walk around? Um, Vegas weight I got heavy But normally when I'm in camp <laughs> Like training and healthily in that I'm normally about 71 70 just So it's depends. not a huge cut Nah But I could Featherweight wasn't too bad But if I had to do the band and weight I would have I would have died There's <laughs> no yeah, I yeah. can make band and weight Three days in a row So I'd end up uh, The first cut wasn't too bad Because you obviously Didn't have to You could prepare for it But then I weighed in I had my first fight I won that via Third round TKO And I ended up Eating food Drinking water and that and I had to stop around 4 o'clock in the Arvo on the fight day. And I had to jump in the sauna. And I had to sweat out about 3 kilos, I think, for the next <laughs> two nights. I remember Jesus, I, I'd yeah. get into the sauna at 69 kilos. And then I had to go to bed at, I think, 66.2. And that way I could float off the rest of the weight and wake up on weight. So Did I had you to yeah. do that, yeah, two Could nights. you bring that just oh, in, in a bit, bit closer? Yeah, yeah, easy as. Just more as a bit direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. perfect. Yeah, 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 where it's... There yeah. we go. It's... Uh, not too bad, but, but you're, you're because you've spent like a lifetime almost around me, like martial arts. Mm-hmm. Do you find it hard to cut the weight? Or like, it's never easy in the sense that you never feel great or anything about it. But it's one of the things, like a lot of things, you just have to get it done. Mm. Same like the real hard training sessions where you got to push in that. You just sort of suck it up, get it done. You sort of you choose to do this profession. Just you got to yeah, put yeah. in the work with it, sort of thing. Did you always know you're gonna? Do something like this? Something, something competitive, competitive yes, yes, because uh, I've, as a kid, I was born a twin, so there was always that sort of sibling rivalry almost. So yeah. playing footy, wrestling, whatever, would always be hyper competitive against each other. I remember like we'd do fake wrestling matches on a trampoline when we were like seven, eight years old. And if I didn't win, <laughs> we'd end up punching on properly because I wanted to win and just things yeah. like that. Or like, Are again, you older? Uh, he's actually 40 minutes older than me. That's, oh, yeah. There's something to be said about the younger brother yeah. syndrome. They reckon yeah, yeah. he's always the toughest. Even 40 minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> crazy. Even angrier, I reckon, too. Mm. Yeah. So he stopped training, obviously, you were saying before. Yeah, so I think he stopped around when we were, I think, 15, 16, when he sort of stopped. And now you can just bash him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly right. So you were doing jiu-jitsu. Uh, when you first started training, was it? Uh, when I originally went to freestyle, yes. I yeah. started uh, martial arts when I was about six, 
doing wrestling at the local PCYC with my twin brother. So we'd do the footy training twice a week. And then wrestling was sort of just something we got into because dad was interested in it. He used to do it. Yeah. Plus, we were more focused on footy and it, re- it was really compatible with sort of footy for defense and everything like that. Yeah, so yeah. we started there. We won national titles, state titles in Australia. There wasn't a lot wow. of competitors, yeah. but it was still good to be in that competitive environment since such a young age and that. And then I left the wrestling scene when I was about 13, and that's when I moved over to freestyle fighting gym with Joe Lopez, and I've been there ever since. Okay. And you started, how, how did you start there, like straight into BJJ? Or yeah, yeah, so I wasn't too interested in the striking straight away. I was doing it more for like the conditioning sort of class and that to stay fit, but I originally jumped in straight for, for, straight for the jiu-jitsu because I was like, I sort of have my base in wrestling. Mm. If I can learn some subs and that, I can sort of get into competing straight away. And then I did that for about three or four years. Then I think when I, I was still doing a few striking classes here and there, but once mm. I turned that sort of 17 and... MMA was approaching about a year away. Yeah. That's when I really decided to sort of focus on the striking and put everything together so you can transition into being an MMA fighter instead of just a sort of jiu-jitsu guy who fights in MMA. Yeah, yeah. And you're saying like the wrestling is different in from the traditional wrestling that you learn at PCYC mm-hmm. to MMA. Like, how can you explain like a bit of that? Yeah, for sure. So the... Number one difference is there's obviously the rule sets and everything like so that opens up a lot more takedowns opportunities and that because if me and you are wrestling and you know my pretty much only goal is to take you down you can prepare a lot better with your defense but as Mm. soon as you start throwing kicking punching it sort of opens up a lot more opportunities and then also the biggest thing is the wall as well because a lot of straight wrestlers they're good in the center but if you take them to the actual wall of a cage, yeah, it's a completely different game there. So they're sort of two of the biggest differences that I had to sort of make up and get used to. And now that's sort of two of my strongest points. Mm. Yeah, I watched a few of your fights actually, and um, it seems like wrestling is one of your st- strong. Um, what do you call it? <laughs> weapons. <laughs> yes. Yep. One of your weapons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, so against the cage, what are you looking for? As in, to do, to either take down your opponent or like defend. Like, yeah. is there things you're looking for, like getting underhook or? Like yeah, for sure. So basically, if I'm pushing you up against the cage, my goal is to try and get you as flat as possible, and I either want and I want your base very narrow, so then I can start looking for trips, or I want you up high so I can shoot underneath you, get to your legs, and take you down that way. Then if the rolls are reversed and my back's against the cage. I want to have a nice wide base. I want to have strong hips and I want to have some sort of underhook where I control you. So if you do decide to drop down on my legs, I can start pulling you up. If you want to come in, I can start using my hands and my arms to frame frame away on you. So it's pretty much the same thing as if you're on the floor, but it's just sort of vertical in a sense. So it's still, yeah, yeah, you don't want to, you never really want to be flat in your back. You don't want to be sort of pinned. You still want to be strong, able to move, have your hips, have your hands free and everything like that. But then again, you can also do a lot more strikes and stuff over there. So the knees, little toe stomps, dirty elbows, dirty boxing, things like that as well. Mm. It's it's taken off, hasn't it? Like yeah. MMA has just exploded, especially in the last, like, what, 10 years? Oh, it's been massive. How but do you find it at the gym, like, since Alex has gone and grabbed the belt? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. casually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> casually becomes world champ. Yeah. It's funny, actually, because I... One of my earliest memories at the gym was, this is when we had the old setup, but I was in the cage just stretching that. I was probably only 13 or 14. It was just when I started. And I remember Volko talking about one of his, I think it might have been one of his first professional fights. And it was him talking about fighting Corey Nelson. And this guy was sort of like the number one, I think, pound for pound in Australia at that time. And he got him in a tournament. And that's when Volko was fighting at 77 kilos. And that's pretty much my earliest memory of sort yeah, of having yeah. an interaction with him. And then from there, I've sort of seen him. I remember because he lost that fight, jumped in the next jiu-jitsu comp with me as well. And he ended up winning the Australian titles in jiu-jitsu. And then from there, he sort of had a few more fights. I saw him win his Thailand scholarship. I saw him have his um, his Uf- first UFC fight actually got cancelled. Then I saw him um, have his first fight. Then I saw him sort of beat legends like... Ch- um, Chad Mendes seen him beat out in Brazil then I was lucky enough to get over for the first Max Holloway fight actually 
that was my first trip to Vegas. So oh, wow. I went over there with him for that. I was backstage for that and I was like, a surreal experience just to see where he came from, sort of fighting on the regional circuit to fight in yeah, in front yeah. of sold out How fans old were you when you went over to Vegas the first time? Um, well, I was actually only 19, but I may or may not have had a fake ID, which <laughs> sorted me out in yeah, everything. Right. Yeah, There's 21 over there, isn't it's it? There's 21, yeah, yeah so yeah. shout out Blake Sage <laughs> for that fake ID, man. Good <laughs> man. Um, so it's, it's 21, is it 21 to drive as well? No. Well, they're driving earlier, but... They're driving early, and they're also shooting guns earlier. <laughs> yeah, so it's like are, 18, yeah. like... Of you course. Can, yeah. You can go by gun. I remember we were out of a hunting store, and I saw this, like, six-year-old kid, and for his birthday, his dad got him, like, a massive knife like this and, like, two little flip, just casually sort of thing. It was just, yeah. like, a bizarre sort of gun and knife culture over there. It's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they got so many murders. Yeah, it's I weird. Can't put it together, right? <laughs> it doesn't add up. <laughs> So you got a fight coming up, otherwise we'd offer you a beer. Yeah. Unless yeah. you want one. But um, so tell us about this fight that's coming up. Yeah, so I fight, fingers crossed, everything goes ahead with this whole COVID bullshit mm. situation that. But July 17th on the Gold Coast, I'm fighting Nicholas Cran on Eternal 61. So that'll be my second pro fight back yeah. at the band and weight division. And the guy, he's a good boxer. I think he's, he was 2-1 and one as an amateur. He's had about... Eight or nine boxing fights. I think he went seven and one as an amateur and one and zero as a pro. So he's pretty experienced on the hands. I know his grappling isn't the strongest, so that's obviously that's where I'll be yeah. looking to take the fight there. But also, I'm very confident if the fight does remain on my feet, I can still finish the fight there. Sweet. Do you? Um, Mark had a couple of questions. He's he. He's usually here. Yep. I'm usually fucking over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm a bit Mark's the fighter, isn't he? Yeah. 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 He had a couple of questions like um about your tell us about your week training schedule. Yeah, so my week's pretty full on. So my Monday and Wednesdays are always the same. My Tuesday, Thursdays are the same. So I just go Monday, Tuesday to start. So my Monday I do a eight AM S and C strength and conditioning at Bay Med Victory. And then I go straight to the gym for nine thirty for a normal like a no gi practice or something. And then I normally do one or two personal training sessions after that. Go home. I sort of try and relax in the day. Then I'm back for, at the gym for 3.30. I teach an hour and a half of kids class. Then I've got another two hours of practice at night. Then I normally do one or two more PTs at night after that. So that's the Monday and Wednesday schedule. <laughs> pretty busy. Yeah, well. yeah, and then yeah. the Tuesday and Thursday is um, I don't have a morning SNC, So my first session is not till 9.30. So I normally try and get like a sleep in or something like that. Just help my body recover. And then, yeah, same thing. It's training, PTs, back at four for coaching, another two-hour practice, some PTs at night, and just throughout the week, just that well, sort of... It's not an easy life, is it? No, nah, it's not like... <laughs> yeah. I got a shit beat out of me in sparring like two hours before, and I was down. I was like, oh, that wasn't good, but it's all good now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus do you, Christ. Do you have like um, a wrestling day and a striking day or anything like yeah, that? Or are you so just mixing it? It's or? pretty structured, our training. So the Monday nights will normally be our MMA grappling and our MMA striking. Tuesday and Thursdays will be sort of some form of conditioning, but that's when we do our wrestling, our war work, our sort of lactic sessions like the assault bike and that. And then normally on the Friday we'll do like a fight simulator, like a spider workout or something like that. And then Saturday mornings, we'd have a spa. And then we got Saturday Arvo and all of Sunday off. So a day and a half to recover and then get back into, back it. into it. Yeah. And what about you, like, for the weight cut mm -hmm. leading up to it? Are you plateauing, like, say, s how, how long is your camp going? Six so weeks, normally I like to get around eight weeks is optimal. But realistically, still normally I only get around six weeks. So if my weight's good, I'm normally hovering around the 70, 71 mark. And I just cut from there. This time it wasn't as good because I was stuck in Vegas and I just ate everything in sight and yeah, yeah. too many cabana parties. <laughs> they can put some weight on you, but... You are staying in a hotel or Airbnb over there? Um, so I think I ended up doing about five weeks in a hotel. And then yeah. for once we started filming The Ultimate Fighter, they got his own house. Yeah, and so then, well, let's start when you went to... So yep. Volko had a, a fight coming up. Yep. You know, uh, title defence. Mm -hmm. Uh, when was that? Uh, I think that was at the start of... I think we left on like March 12th or something, maybe a yeah. bit later to get there. So we got there for... We went there a week earlier so Volko could sort of acclimatise in that. Yeah. But also because Brad Riddell was fighting that following week mm. who had Gregor Gillespie. Okay. So yeah. our first week went off without a hitch. Like Volko ended up hitting all his... We had to... Um, how do you say... 
cram some training sessions in because of uh, obviously yeah. you lose a day in that. So yeah, he right. smashed mm. some hard training sessions together. He was still looking fit, strong, like best shape he's ever been in sort of thing. And then it was the Friday night after Brad Riddell weighed in. We ended up, it was me, Geordie and Michael in our hotel room, sort of locked in our floor. And we ended up just putting some mats down, having a rolling session sort of thing around eight, nine o'clock at night. Yeah. And then I remember Shane Young comes in, he opens the door and he's just like has a tower wrapped around him. He's like, oh, boys, um, Volko's popped for COVID. And we're like, oh, yeah, like, good one, Shane. He's like, no, I'm fucking serious, eh? And we're like, yeah. then it's just straight away like, oh, <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah. And then turns out he did, it was, um, we thought, fingers crossed, it might have been a false positive or something at the start. Yeah. But then as soon as we went back to the hotel room, Volko put like a voice message over. We're all isolating. And then he was saying, um, there's three more of you who have tested positive, but they haven't told me who it was yet. Is this at the airport sure. or they, they test at the venue? So how it worked, we, you get tested, you get chucked into a hotel yeah. and then you get tested. And then once you come back negative, they take you to the hotel directly across from it. And that one's fenced off. That was the residence in, and that's a sort of bubble hotel okay, where you yeah. can only leave by UFC shuttle and stuff like that. Oh, I see. But right yeah, next yeah. door is a public one. So we passed all them tests, the suite. We got tested, I think, two days on that first week. It might have been the Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. And then we got tested again. It was the last test where we actually popped positive. And then Bolko put that message through, and about an hour later, he told us who else. So there was three, other, three more of us. I was one of them. So then the next day, we ended up having to go over to the other public hotel and sort of start quarantining and everything from there because the Americans do it a little bit different. Wow. Yeah, what was what that involved, their quarantine? Um, they told us to go next door, um, keep your mask on and, yeah, that was Th it. That was it? <laughs> yeah. So they you're not locked in your room or anything? No, nah, they're like, go tell her. No. Um, they're like, they specifically said, don't tell a reception you have COVID. So, oh, so they well. can spread it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just, so they that, take herd immunity to another level over there. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And what? What if, did you have any effects? Did you I, feel anything? I did. So I think we got there because we had to sleep in the bubble hotel on the Friday night. Still, yeah. Moved over there Saturday, and I think it wasn't around the, until the Monday or Tuesday I started to get some effects. The first one I got was extreme fatigue. So I was super tired. I was sleeping about twelve hours a night, sort of thing. Like I'd go to bed at eight. Wake up at eight, real lethargic, go yeah. for a walk around the car park or something with some of the boys. And then I'd end up coming back home around midday and I'd have to crash out for like two or three hours just to sort of revitalize myself. Yeah. That went on for about four days. And a few of the other boys had it, but there was nothing worse than that. And okay, then I yeah. ended up starting to feel all right. And I wanted to like, because it hit your lungs pretty hard, but I was, in, I was a bit skeptic with it because I still felt all right. So I ended up going for a run and I got like, 200 meters into a run and i'm talking like oh, i felt so unfit like sure. thought i was dying like i had chest compressions never had before like i went wow. i went back to the room i was like boys that was such a dumb idea eh? and then like <laughs> an hour or two later we end up just like ordering all this like uber eats and that because there's nothing else you can do and i start to eat it and i realized i've lost my taste and smell oh. so that was that was a pain in the ass that one so i lost my taste for about a week which yeah. wasn't too bad but i ended up losing my smell for about three weeks all up so it's sure. really bizarre, like, it sort of not just numbs your senses in a... So I'd sort of go from being in a hotel room, no, like, shit air, everything, then I'd go outside and there's no difference whatsoever. So it yeah, sort of, like, yeah. took one... And even when um we got cleared, I was going around Vegas and everything, like, no smell. Like, someone could be smoking a cigarette right next to me, like, no sense That's of it whatsoever, it? yeah. Fucking hell. So it was really bizarre, but other than that, I was... I got off pretty well. Obviously, Volko got hit with it pretty rough, but that was... Pretty much, I think, because he was obviously at the end of a training camp. He smashed all the hard sessions. Calories are yeah. low, sort of like, if he's going to hit you, he's going to hit you at your when you're at your weaker sort of thing. Yeah. But the other three of us who were all sort of healthy and yeah, yeah. fit, not in too depleted states, we were pretty good with it. Mm. Do you know who, who gave it? No, we don't actually. <laughs> have to. I would like to see him, though. <laughs> but no, nah, we don't know. Because it's weird, like... We, we followed all the um, protocols and everything. We yeah. stayed in the bubble, masked up and everything. If but it's that loose with it over exactly there. Exactly right. Yeah. could be anyone, a waiter or something yeah. like that. We know? came over from Australia with like 10 people on our flight. Mm. Then we landed at LA. And then from LA to Vegas, it's an open airport sort of thing. Like no, um, what would you say, COVID restrictions pretty much. 
So yeah. everyone had masks and that, but we're talking, we're in a three by three, like three, three, three plane to Vegas from LA. Every seat full, like yeah. at the airport, thousands upon thousands. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right. You're the first person I've met that's had COVID. I th- I'm the first for a lot of people <laughs> yeah, actually yeah, had yeah, COVID. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of good. Yeah, it's so good to you know. You have another experience of it, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we don't. We hear so that's I think that's where a lot of the conspiracy thing comes mm-hmm. with it because yeah. Australia we just haven't had any contact with exactly it, you right. Know? Yeah, you kind of you're like, is it is it really that bad? Like, because we don't know anyone that's yeah. had it, or yeah, especially here, we haven't been no. hit at all. But you're young, <coughs> fit. exactly. You're right. out in the sun all the time, mm-hmm. you know, training and hard, doing, it's, keeping that's right. looking after myself. Funniest thing was though, probably about two or three months before I actually had COVID, I probably had the worst flu of my life. Like, I'm talking, it was like 10 times worse than COVID. I was bedridden and like <laughs> yeah, yeah. everything like that. So it's sort of good to see comparisons of some sort of don't like the way, obviously it's going to get political, but the way like Australia's handling it sort of thing. Like, yeah. obviously America, they had a lot more deaths and everything, but if you go there now, it, the states open up, everything's back to normal. No restrictions, mm. no mask, it's free in and out sort of thing. So they might have... Short, short term suffered a bit more but long term they're so far in front of us especially for like guys like us who want to get fights start traveling internationally yeah. and that get people in to help train and stuff like that the world's just still we're well, shut off to the world sort of thing still yeah. yeah well they've got the vaccine thing rolled, rolled out, out though, yeah i think everyone's pretty much everyone i spoke to over there was either fully vaccinated or they caught covid so they yeah, had like yeah. one of the two but most people ended up catching covid then getting fully vaccinated as well so so you got uh, a double whammy. Exactly yeah. right. So Volko's fight fell through. Mm-hmm. And then while you are in quarantine, you found out about the Ultimate Fighter, was it? Yeah, so I remember because what happened was I was staying back with Volko because his COVID was so bad. He ended up... He was really ill, wasn't he? He was. He ended up going to hospital a couple of times, getting on like dexamethasone. It's like a really strong like antibiotic steroid for your lungs, like coughing up blood. Like I remember one morning... Was he really? Yeah. Shit. I walked in and he looks like he was on death's door. He was like slumped over in bed like this and then he would sort of usher himself back up stay there for like 20 minutes and he's like too tired to even do that and he'll just have to lay back down in his bed so it hit hit, hit him pretty rough yeah but yeah so we once after the 10 day period you're no longer contagious so okay. i was sweet he was still a bit fluy so he waited a bit longer but mm. then we we're able to after the 14 days he was still testing positive, but he was no longer contagious sort of thing. Yep. So we were able to sort of go out, see a bit of Vegas and that. And then it was in between that t- time period of waiting for him to test negative and go home that they actually contacted him about tough. And then I, he just called me into his hotel room and he's like, oh, I've got some news. And I was like, yeah, what is this sort of thing? He's like, oh, they want me and Ortega to film tough now. I was like, fuck, that's awesome sort of thing. He's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, fuck, well, if I can stay, I'm going yeah. to <laughs> say no, stay sort of thing. And he's like, oh, we'll just see what happens. And then, yeah, yeah, I was fortunate enough to stay and able to be a part of that show, which was like a surreal experience. Yeah, it's pretty What's wild. What's the rundown of the show? I haven't seen it. So how so. it works is they had two divisions. They had 135 pounds and 185 pounds. So Burnham and middleweight. Okay. And they got um, 16 of them. So eight Burnham weights, eight middleweights. Amateurs? Uh, professionals professionals oh, yeah okay, yep. so then they put the poor blokes they put these guys into a house with no doors no music no yeah. books no entertainment and just cameras everywhere and sort of and cameras and alcohol everywhere and just sort of they give them alcohol yeah they want them that to makes fight. the best tv yeah. exactly yeah. right yeah <laughs> <laughs> the first week when no one um fights sort of thing obviously no but as soon as like people start losing because even if you lose you have to stay in the house till the end of a show oh. so guys might lose in the first week and then they just decide to get on a piss so yeah. then you have old mate he's preparing for the biggest <laughs> fight of his life <laughs> and then half the house is just partying on the other end sort of thing so it gets pretty gets pretty funny in there they want to lose uh, yeah. where did you guys stay uh they hooked us up with our own um airbnb oh, they yeah, actually nice. did the switch on us because they sent us like a really nice mansion and everything like that, which was, we still got a decent place, but they sent it to us. Then we ended up going to this place and it was like a polar opposite. And yeah. it didn't click for like two days. And I was like, wait, we don't have a hop tub, eh? He's like, what <laughs> do you mean? I'm like, the photo you showed us had hop tubs and that. And then we go through and it was like polar opposite. It's like, it was still a good experience, yeah. but I just want to chuck that out there. They put a switcher on us. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> dogs. <laughs> <We're neat>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, this, it was filmed in Vegas. Yeah, so it was yep. filmed in Vegas. So I think, all up, we were in Vegas for about 10 and a half, 11 weeks. 
from yeah early March till April. Yeah, and we and guys, June, uh, uh, you're tr- training the whole lot of them, or just one individual person? So we had eight of them. So okay, we've, we before the show starts, we sort of got I think two days before we got some names in that, and yeah. we sort of did our own evaluation um, on fight pick day. And then we were able to pick eight fighters each, so four bantamweights, four middleweights, and that sort of made up our team. And then we just had two practices a day with them, six days a week, and we'd just train like that. Okay. So but the UFC obviously picked the the guys to come on the show prior. Yep. And you just pick who they are? like. Yeah, so that's how it works. So they applied for the show. Yeah. And then I think most of the guys only got like a two-week notice or something like, hey, you're going to be on the tough in two weeks. Sure. And they had to quarantine for a week before they went on. So that then obviously I think two days before we got their names and everything, then we got a free uh, like a session with them to evaluate them, mm. and then from there we just picked your teams and then boom, fight started. Did yeah. you get who you wanted? I think so. Oh yeah, no, nah, we we had a good team. Yeah, okay. all the boys were just it was a good bunch of guys. Like it wasn't yeah, it's what you want. You sort of just want a good bunch of guys there to train, have like enjoy a bit of a banner, take a piss out of each other, and just have that good environment because. Nobody wants mm. anyone who's a douchebag or anything yeah, like yeah, that, really. Right. Yeah. And do they all have the same amount of experience, I'm guessing? Then no, it was very different. Oh, so wow. we had some... I'm trying to think what was the lowest record. I think the lowest record was probably 5-0, and oh, which sounds yeah. like a decent 5, but you had guys with sometimes like 20, almost 30 pro fights on there. So there's a big range there. But I think the average guy had about close to probably 10 pro fights of that. Fuck. So they're from all over America only? Yeah, they uh, they accepted only the people from America, but they had I think two Ukrainians, so Cameron and L- Ludwig. They had them two, but I think they were based in LA or something anyway. Yeah, because obviously with COVID, COVID they, yeah, they started off with um, international applicants, but then obviously because of COVID, yeah, they had through. to just pick domestically sort of thing. What Which do you What do you think of the whole experience for for a fighter like? Is that something you'd be interested in down the line? Yeah, I wasn't too sure on it before I sort of got to experience, but after watching, I think it'd be great. It's like the way I look at it was you just got to you got paid to train twice a day, pretty much get all your food and everything looked after. You just have to live in a house with a bunch of other boys. So yeah. Like, yeah. it's not t- if you actually enjoy what you do, it's not that bad of a life sort of thing. You just get up, train, relax, train again. Look, look at the legends that have come out of the house. Like exactly right. Some, Fucking big names, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's no <laughs> chance. <laughs> yeah, no, you got legends like Forrest Griffin. Like, we had a fair... Because he sort of had a few things to do with the show, and he's obviously the OG winner and that. Yeah. So it was great to see, like, him, how he set himself up from life for it, from winning that show, winning the belt. Now he's done full circle. He's back on the show, and, like, that sort of thing was awesome. Do, does the UFC look after a lot of their older fighters? I know that there's... Here and there they have, but... I don't know too much. I don't try not to get too much into it, but who knows? I don't think so because you don't really hear too much about the sort of UFC going out of their way to look out for guys who sort of left for a promotion and that. I feel like if you were in there and you sort of do like a DC or something where you mm. yeah, yeah. you stay in Commentary. there, but I think if you just fight your fights out and you're not a legend or something, once you're done, they're done with you sort of thing. Yeah. That sort of business aspect. Left on your ass. Well, they were yeah, trying exactly to, right. They were trying to unionise for a while, wasn't they, Mark Hunt? Uh, yeah, I think they're yeah. still trying to do it, but it's just... Can't get them all on the same page, I don't page, think so, eh? nah. Fucking be hard. Yeah. Can't even get bloody coal miners to get on the same nah, page. Nah, <laughs> <they're laughs> fucking fighters. But also, the, egos. like Dana and all the people with all the money probably don't want that to happen either. So no, exactly right. Yeah, you know, they've got ways of what's of the um, that. What's the minimum for... A, like, so look, we can start with the UFC, yep. but like their, say, your first debut UFC wage. I think the lowest they go is maybe 10 and 10, but I could be wrong. So that's yep. 10K to show mm. and then 10K if you win, which some people do like, oh, 20 gra- 20K for a fight's great, but people don't look at it as like, you might spend half of that in your training camp. Yeah. What, that's what, six weeks? Yeah, exactly So you're right. not working or anything, really. Yeah. You're going half of six weeks. So. And then you think... It's you usually more, yeah. isn't it? Because it's accumulation of your life. Exactly to right. To get to that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 20K is nothing. Nothing, that's yeah. Like, and then you still got to pay the tax and everything over the US tax on it. And then... Do um, you have to pay tax over here on it f- as well? Um, I'm not sure. I Overseas think you may have to. Yeah, you might have to. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know some. Yeah, <laughs> some. Some people get like really sort of done by just for tax laws and that. But you yeah, got to yeah. think like if you bring in people to train or that, or hmm. even just buying your meals, buying your training. If you want to pay your coaches, yeah, use yeah. this facility. 
buy this for your recovery and stuff like the costs add up so realistically at the end of the day you're not getting much back out of what at you actually all. get to fight yeah yeah do they still get sponsors like the fighters they do but it's more on the side isn't exactly it exactly right so if they got rid of it because apparently they look too much like nascar and everything oh, like fuck off. i was stupid because he just didn't want to make him money exactly it right because they got rid of all of the short off the shorts mm. um Mouth people used to have stuff in their mouth guards. Some people used to even put like brands in the hair and yeah. stuff like that. It was cool ways to sort of show off it's your some, sponsors. Yeah, and that. that's right. Get some money on the so side. So they want to see exactly right because some guys are making like a hundred k just off their sponsors and that, which is great for a fight. But then yeah. as soon as that Reebok deal came in, they tanked that. So then, oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. So now you can't advertise mm. sponsors on your like actual UFC events or I think even um, UFC Fight Week. Most of the media stuff you sort of have to wear like. The Reebok sort of kit and everything they give you on that. So. That fucking sucks because it yeah. looks shit. The Reebok stuff's garbage. I don't like it. Some people think it make it look um, more professional, but I feel like fighting's a very it's a team sport, but it's very yeah. individualized. Individual. You oh, you so style. you should be able to have show your own self and everything like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the Reebok thing just reminds me of like a you know the the steel works or mm-hmm. going to school like you're in a uniform, just cookie cutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all look the same. And yeah. it was shit designs like. Oh, man, some of the memes they have, they have, like, people, like, there's one, I forget this heavyweight guy or something, but the shorts they give him just always makes him look like he wears a nappy. Yeah. <laughs> like, this poor bloke, like, he's had, like, five or six fights in the UFC, they switched to Reebok, and, like, his last four fights, it looks like he's legit wearing a diaper or something. It's terrible. Fuck yeah. you know. So, what do they, so, switch to Australia, mm-hmm. what's the wages kind of like for here? Oh, Nothing. Like, just yeah, it's nothing. For the love of it. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, I don't even like really look at what I get paid after I farm. Like, it's probably nothing anyway. We're seeing, well, we're seeing that with like boxing as well. Yep. Like, Mark's, he's, well, there's not he's a lot. a little bit, but yeah, well, it, it should really. be a lot more. I think oh, all I think fighters so. should be on a lot but more. But it's the money. entertainment game, isn't it? You know, and so if you haven't got, if you're not like UFC's got all that TV money, yeah, and, and the huge stadiums and that they're playing it, yeah, exactly over right. there yep. as well, isn't it? So at the end of it, so it's money. You know, mm. if you're gonna like, if you're Mike Tyson, he came over. He'd still make a lot of money because oh, still loads of people were yeah. fucking going to go see him. Someone's still making know? money though. Oh, someone's going to make. The yeah. 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 definitely yeah. making yeah, fucking exactly money. Right. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, it's yeah, but there's not a lot of money in it. Even once, that's why I think the biggest um, misconception with it is, is people like, oh, you're a professional now. You might be making this like, nah. And then it, the next thing's like, oh, when you get to the UFC, like, oh, oh, if you win your first fight, you might make twenty k, and everyone's like, oh, wow, twenty k for like. Especially if you get a quick knockout, it might only be like a minute, two minutes work, but people yeah. don't see the years of training, yeah. all the other expenses yeah, right. and everything like that. 20K yeah. in a lot nowadays. It's man. not, it's, you know? it's really not, no. a. Yeah. Uh, you right. can't even put that on a house. No. They'll just laugh at you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> even the car now. Like, yeah, cars, cars are going, going up. Fucking roof. Fuck. So yeah, that, but that's the idea, them. it's the ladder though, isn't it, man? Yep. So is that your plan? UFC, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, 100% it is. How um, many? Yeah. Have you got like a timeline? So I just turned 22 on Wednesday. Happy so birthday. Cheers, yeah. man. But hopefully probably another... I'm not one of these guys. You see too many, they want to rush it. And mm. you see it too often. They sort of... They they obviously have got the skills and everything to be there. But I think a big thing is the experience factor. Is because once you're there, you can't go backwards sort of thing. You have to sort of have your set foundation and be able to sort of climb yeah, through the ranks. Yeah. You don't want to be one of these guys who takes two steps forward, one step back. Every yeah, yep. few yeah. fights, and then you're never really going to be able to climb to that top. And the way I look at it is what, like, Volko, obviously being, like, the closest sort of inspiration, everything who's done it, and, like, Israel Adesanya and everyone like that, they sort of took their time. They had their foundation built. I think Volko had, like, it might have been, like, 13 and 1, 14 and 1 maybe before he got into the UFC. Yep. So that's a lot of experience outside. So he sort of he's seen yeah. everything that you could sort of see outside of it. Then once he got in there, he was able to skyrocket himself through and not face any sort mm. of losses or anything like that. I feel like that's the way to do it. Yeah, Especially yeah. you want to sort of make that career, get in, get out, get your money, get your championship status and sort of build your sort of lifestyle and brand off that. You yeah, need to be able right. to do that. You don't want to be sort of be one of these guys who wins two, lose two, win one, lose one. Because then Become you're a bit of a, a journeyman, journeyman type Exactly thing. right. Yeah. Journeyman or gatekeeper. And that's sort of yeah. not where I think my ceiling is. So I really want to be able to sort of that's right. showcase it. So you I get in there when like seven or eight fights straight. Yeah. Then you might... Yeah, it doesn't take much to actually get get a decent fight, does it? Once, exactly once right. You're in there. Yeah, and especially uh, a perfect example is Brad Riddell, the New Zealander. Um, they just put up um, one of his stats, and I think like the overall guys he's faced in his first four fights had a record 
I might be wrong, but I think it was something like 127 to like 17 or something. Like Jesus. He fought Jamie Malarkey, who was like 12 and 1. He fought, who else? He fought, there are like two other killers who were like 24 and like 2, then like 18 and 3. And then yeah. last fight against Drew Dober, who's a top 15 ranked guy. And just, they sort of, if he wasn't fully prepared, he wouldn't have been able to. Obviously, they put gave him a murderous, murderous row, but because mm. he sort of took his time, yeah, did everything yeah. right, he sort of showcased himself. And that's sort of, build him into yeah. sort of a star and they're like okay we tested him he went through we can sort of build him but yeah. a lot of guys i'll see like oh this guy's a bit of hype we'll give him sort of a harder fight see how he goes they lose it they'll just chuck it that's back it. sort of yeah thing. yeah that's get right the yeah. You sort of thing. but like you're saying with that you get to the top you don't have to stay there like have you got ideas you know you're only 22 mm. and that we're, we're jumping ahead there but you know volko's famous like this is world fame you can build a, a whole rest of your life around yeah. that if you work it properly hey eh? yeah so my main ambitions is i do want to become like ufc champion i want to just i want to fight for as long as i can whilst remaining physically healthy and then after that i, I sort of i really do i really enjoy teaching so i will like to yeah. sort of open up my own academy i sort of jump in with like coaching staff or something mm. and sort of approach that full-time coaching role yeah and yeah. then sort of just hang around the sport however it is so even if it's like jumping into some form of refereeing, commentating, analysts yeah, yeah. or something like that, still always be involved because it's pretty much like I was lucky enough to found sort of a sport I love mm. since yeah, a yeah. young age and I sort yeah. of want to be able to make my life work around it. That's a great idea. And you got the training partners. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I sure do. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't get much better. Yeah. Have you seen many since volko has got the belt? Um, training partners like that you wouldn't really see in the Wollongong area? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes and no. I found our casual sort of um, hobbyist and that always after a Volco fight or anything, it always goes up. You get a lot more people jumping in. But it's more we sort of had a good team for Volco's first or yeah, first Holloway camp and that we started getting a few guys come down from Sydney. Volco yeah. also cross trains. He goes over to Tiger Muay Thai in Thailand. Then he goes over to City Kickboxing in Auckland, New Zealand. So he's always oh, cross training. Yeah, yeah. So we always get... Even if he doesn't necessarily have the guys back here, he, he can, can bring the yeah. knowledge back, give it to us, and we can sort of try and emulate the new sort of things he shows. But we do have a fair few guys coming down now and Bob yeah. in camp, like Jamie, Malaki, Josh Kulabau, good UFC guys, they come down, help mm. him out with his camps. It's awesome. What about um Tiger? You mentioned Tiger. Yep. How's that going now during COVID? Because I know Thailand isn't doing too well. I don't think it's going too well because some of the coaching staff on our team for tough they um work at tiger and that mm. and i i wasn't asking too much but i just saw like a few posts and everything yeah. but i don't think it's going well purely because i i've been there once and even just footage you would have seen just packed out classes every yeah. time it's just sort of tourist training hotspot but because no one can travel it's pretty much just for locals there now yeah and so there's still turnover but it's nowhere near what it used to be sort of thing yeah. which is sad to see it is yeah. my mate um I work with him over here, and he ended up moving over there. Yep. Um, shout out to Trevor Bennett. But he, um, when COVID hit, it was maybe a couple of months after, there were, he was posting videos of, like, Thai um, cleaners. They were scrubbing the street, like, yeah, with so few yeah. water. Far and he's like, I don't think they know what COVID is. <laughs> yeah. But he ended up having to leave because it got that bad there. But he, he, he was saying, like, more people are dying from... Um, poverty and starvation because mm -hmm. there's no money coming in. Yeah, there's, there's no tourists. No tourists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuel the economy there. Yeah, so I'm sure Tiger's probably suffering struggling. The same yeah, I fate. feel like all of Phuket, everywhere over there, will be struggling, which is sad to see because yeah, it sucks. It's the best place. Oh, I it's love going. Amazing. It's so good. Yeah. I've only been there but once, but I had like, I was there. I went, it was my first solo international trip actually. Oh, so it was nice. good. Yeah, so I went there. I think I was, it was for that tournament I was talking about earlier. So yeah. I started oh, yeah, my. Yeah training prep for that so i went over there by myself for like 11 12 days and it was yeah cra so fun like going on a moped <laughs> go on the go to the beach train with killers like three times a day relax cheap yeah, food yeah. good living like there's nothing to complain about over there yeah it's great great food you'll have to go there matt yeah you gotta go there, man Hayley doesn't want to go no nah. so i'll have to, well, I'll have to leave the wife at home too dirty or like too sex you know like the there's a yeah. big push for sex there yeah but fuck you don't have to see any of that nah Especially, nah. you would have stayed in on Tiger premises, did yeah, you? Yeah, like in the stay, camp. What's it, I think they call it the Sui or whatever, like that long fitness strip. I just oh, stayed yeah. on one of the hotels there, so I was just yeah walking up and back, and then get a moped on weekends. I want to go to the beach or something. Yeah, it was man. good fun. Yeah, 
Yeah, t- can you show me another Wacker Changi? Yeah, you want a Wacker Changi? Yeah, that could be a good sponsor for you, mate. <laughs> Wacker Changi, yeah, yeah. Colby Wacker Changi thickness. Quite, quite I nice. I think it's quite a, a good to fighter. It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's even got a fucking. He's what's he got? An egg flipper. <laughs> mate, I'm sold. There, it's. He reminds me of um. You ever watch Evil Dead? Yeah, the yeah. Fucking, you ever watch that? I've seen the movie. I think. Yeah, it's old. It's zombie old. Movie. Yeah, zombie yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. That's yeah. what he looks like. He Ash. does too, actually. Yeah, Ash from it. Yeah. Oh, he's got it on Netflix now. Ash yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's old and, and creepy. Yeah, yeah, he's a bit weird now. Yeah, I like that fucking mm. movie though. That was great. Chainsaw on the hand. Yeah, that was. I wanted. I Iconic. Cut my hand off, but I had to, couldn't play guitar. Put a guitar <laughs> on your hand. Use that instead. <laughs> That's eh? Right. Look at me. I'm Steve Vai. Ah, oh, shit. So you think the states is few? You liked it? Uh yes and no. Uh. Obviously, Vegas is fun and everything like that, but at the end of the day, it is sort of like a city dropped in a desert almost. So Yeah. They've so got real problems with water over there, obviously being a desert. Yeah. I know those, they're paying people to not have grass or something over there. Yeah, it was weird. The most bizarre thing I found was the lack of just... Because obviously coming from Illawarra, it's like such a coastal town and everything, and then sort of going over there, like you, if a grass you see was probably fake, yeah. lack of trees, <laughs> but shit. what... People don't realise also the buildings are so so dull because of the sand and the oh, dust and everything. So it's not they, all bright and it's not like yeah, The yeah. city's bright, but as soon as you go on the outskirts, it's just everything's like a dark brown, a oh. dirty yellow. Like yeah. You see um, blocks of houses just all the same colour, all the same design. So it's sort of like monopolised a bit like that. But it was, it was obviously good living in that because we had the training facilities, yeah, yeah. the partners... And everything like that. So it worked out well, but I don't think I could live there purely because I'm a coastal kid. Like, I love the beach, I love hikes yeah, and stuff yeah, like sure. that. And I remember the first time we went to Austin, even, oh, just, yeah, yeah. even just driving over there, it was like so nice just to see trees and a lake sort of thing, which yeah. I haven't seen for three months. It's so refreshing. Yeah, I want to go to Austin. It's got a really good music is scene that, and stuff over there. Is it central Austin? Austin, Texas, isn't it? Austin, Texas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah is that more towards the center of? Yeah. Oh, I'm not good in yeah, it's in the middle. Yeah. yeah, I'm not good in geography. Bigger yeah. than Texas. <laughs> like Texas ain't that big. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Western Australia is five times bigger than Texas. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's full of Mexicans, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't been there. It actually used to be Mexico, I think. <laughs> so <laughs> they just <laughs> took it. <laughs> they just, yeah, just kind of borrowed it for a few, a few centuries. Well, they took the whole country, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a mate of mine, uh, he worked over in Vegas for years. Yeah. But he, I think he, he was in the show business, you know, oh, and the okay, dancing yeah. business. What sort of show yeah. business? He showed everything business. <laughs> I was going to say, know? there's a few different types of shows <laughs> yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Clint Scott. Yeah, so he, um, yeah, he made a good living over there. Yep. But I think because he was in the show business, uh, worked all night, slept during the day, right. he probably, yeah. you know, he got to see the glamour of it yeah. and everything, you know, and sleep through all the... Um, all the homeless people wandering around. Yeah, I feel like, like if if you want to sort of work, if you don't, I don't mind sort of city living in that, but I'm like, I love an early night. Like I'm in bed by like 8, 30, 9 o'clock most uh, nights sort of thing if I can You're a be. good sleeper? Yeah, so yeah. I like to sleep. I'd like to sort of wake up around six thirty seven. So if you wake up in that time in Vegas, it's a ghost town sort of thing. So it's sort of, it was weird getting used to like mm. the night scenes didn't get good to like 11, 11 30 at night. And I was like, Sometimes like, man, I just want to go to bed. At yeah. <laughs> so Brazil, Brazil's like that. Like, you get up for breakfast and there's no fucker open. I've like, heard about that, actually. Yeah, yeah. They're all, like, asleep. They yeah. don't get up mm. till midday. It's Fair Spain, same thing. Yeah, it's like, that Latin I'm thing. fucking starving. Starving, yeah. <laughs> but then they're up to, like, three or four in the oh, morning. Yeah. They're having dinner at midnight. Midnight yeah. and stuff like that. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Siestas. Everyone's having siestas. Well, it's fucking hot. It it is. Makes, we should do that in Australia, really. Like, yeah. Yeah, they shouldn't look summer. at sleeping on the job as a bad thing sometimes. No, I feel like it's uh, summer they could add which would help yeah yeah, yeah i remember this one um job site it was across from where we were staying yeah and oh th- to mention this the fucking hotel was that we paid top dollar because we wanted there was three guys staying in one block it was yep. supposed to be like an apartment and it had a double bed that was it <laughs> <laughs> like this <laughs> fucking three of us head to toe <laughs> yeah <laughs> We had like, so my mate sent us the information and it looks like, yeah. like, this place is awesome. Go there, yeah, double bed, um, no telly, nothing like that. Like a little balcony that was probably about the size of the table. Far out. The um, the shower was the best. It was a pipe coming out of the wall and that was it. No shower head, <laughs> like cut off on a shit angle. Like it wasn't even cut flush <laughs> and the water would just dribble out. Oh, that's uh, fucking terrible. Like, the awesome. toilet wasn't hooked up properly. It was like 
went to the wall and then it just went like um, an elbow and then out the wall, out the building. Yeah. So I think it was just going on at the ground. I don't know. It was oh, the, get out. Yeah. Did you guys stay there? Yeah, for a week. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh two weeks. <laughs> two <actually>. weeks. <laughs> yeah. Sounds worse than quarantine. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I could but imagine. We didn't really stay there. You know, you're in Brazil. You never. Yeah. You never in there really. Just really crashing out. Yeah. Yeah. But while we're there, we we're there for sorry, yeah, two weeks because um, I remember my mum was ringing me because um, it was during Carnival. Okay, yeah. And that year they had, oh, I think it was seventeen murders Oof. in two weeks. Jeez, yeah, like yeah, I heard it's Checking pretty dangerous up, over there. Yeah, yeah. The favelas and that. Yeah, the cops have been going through there and just machine gunning that's, people. That's when it was. Ah, it was the was cops doing that. Jesus. Man. We actually yeah. went into the favelas. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Brave. Yeah. Well, stupid. Because yeah. I'd never done any research. Oh, and so just you went, were just oblivious to I didn't even to know it. what a favela was. Oh, I'm no. like, sounds like a fucking ice creamery. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> we go up into the favelas and we're looking for bad stuff. Yeah. As you do. And um, first we st- it started at a strip club. So we're at the strip club and we're drinking these drinks called um, Caprikas. Oh, Caprioska or something like that? Something, yeah. something yeah. weird. Ca- Caprahana. And we yeah, just started naming them Courage because after what we did, we're like, fucking hell, I'd never do that like sober. Sober, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we ended up in the favelas. And there's yeah. fucking kids with machine guns everywhere because it's run by the mob, by the gangsters and shit. And I didn't go any further, but my mates went and scored some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> In the top of this favela, they reckon there was just dudes sitting around like a table full of cash and bloody gear. And he's like, they all had guns on the table and it was just like a movie. And my mate's just like, what about the police here? And he's like, I am the fucking police. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his guns and shit. Full of energy, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Up. Like, I started thinking these guys aren't coming home. Yeah. Because it, it was getting on and I'm sitting with this guy I never met before who was one of my mate's mates, you yep. know, like, and he's like hammered. And he's just mouthing off at this guy with the AK-47. <laughs> and the taxi driver's like sweating up and that, looking at his watch and shit. Oh, I don't like this, you know. And I'm in the back kind of a little bit sobering up. Just yeah. going, fuck, what are we doing? <laughs> and, um, down the hill comes two mo- motorbikes because that's how they went up there yeah. on, the, on the back of these motos. And like real shitty bikes. They were in a bike gang. They had like the vest and that. But it was like <laughs> posty bikes and fucking oh. like a DR200 from 78. Not intimidating or anything. <laughs> no, 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 Harleys and all. <laughs> <laughs> and um, here's me mate. Like he's at the front. He's riding the bike. He's yeah. got he's got the, the owner fucking riding bitch <laughs> cuddling him. And he's like, ah, <laughs> coming down the hill. Pulls up and he's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Pulled three, four boys. Oh, dude. That was like 15 years ago. There's no way no. I'd ever do something like that. Like, so I was just thing asking for trouble. Yeah. They ended up escorting us out like um, walkie-talkies. Because like, yep. there was police raids oh, shit. all the time. The, the World Cup was coming. Okay, oh, yep. So they were trying yep. to clear it all out. Yeah. And they, they were sending the police in like full riot gear with machine guns. Mm-hmm. And they were just... Fucking going to war, pretty much. Yeah. But yeah. They could fix it all overnight by just legalising cocaine. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Fucking then they get all the tax revenue and all, yeah. these, all these gangsters would be out of a job. Legalise it all, eh? And then yeah. sort yeah. themselves out. Yeah, fucking hell. Well, they, I think the gangsters, they, they just want to live. Like they're, well, there's no jobs. Shithole, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If there's no jobs, you you got to put food on the table. And that's Somehow, the yeah, exactly yeah, right. So. And it's kind of crazy. Like they got the, um, the most expensive place to live in Rio and then right behind it like a street is full poverty. I've seen photos of that it's like a massive hotels and then just off it is the slumps and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. It's wild. Kind of, it's like schizophrenic a bit, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Kind of have to close your eyes a bit. Yeah. Well, I think India's like that. Mate spend a lot of time over there. And that's one place I want to go to because if you want the extremes, I think India is the the most extreme place. You you know, you're stepping over dead bodies and shit in the street. Yeah. And if you yeah. touch the body, it's your responsibility to actually deal with it. Oh, shit. So they just leave the dead bodies. No one touches them and shit. Um, it's a different, yeah. Uh, different cultures di- and everything. Completely out, different compl- culture. Different man. living. It's re- and crazy. An- ancient culture. Is that know? why the guys are floating in the river? Well, yeah, you got the Ganges, Varanasi is where they burn all the bodies and stuff and they do them like on pies and float them out. Yeah, but they're not burn, are they? Not they're just the time. Like <laughs> <laughs> wood's really expensive because everyone burns. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but fucking, you see kids swimming around and drinking the water as these bodies are floating past. Oh, and, and it's, yeah, it's amazing what Gary was saying. We had um, 
uh, Gary Griffin on, who's yep. a naturopath, and he was just talking about the gut biome. And if we drank that water in the Ganges, we would die. Oh, like, hands yeah, down, we'd fucking imagine, die. Yeah. Mm. But them over there, the kids drink the water fine, man, because they just got their gut biomes used to it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you're saying they eat um, chicken raw they over raw? there with no problems. Like, just. Just eat chicken. it like they probably can't cook it because they've yeah, got nothing yeah. to fucking cook yeah, it with. I didn't think of that actually, but I remember when I did um, my chefy course, we had this um, I think it was Thai or Chinese guy, and then they talk and they do like a uh, bacteria and all that, how yep. to cook your food, and say always cook chicken all the way through. And this guy just put us, no, no, you cook it medium rare. <laughs> and, and this is in New Zealand, they're like, no, you don't, <laughs> you're gonna fucking fail, you, you cook, cook it all the way through. <laughs> but I think for him, it was just they that's the way they ate, they got man. used to it, sort of thing, yeah. What's what's your diet yeah. like now? You uh, heading towards a fight? Normally, if I get the full sort of six to eight weeks, I work with a nutritionist, so fight dietitian Geordie. Yeah. He mm. looks after me in that. So normally, it's not too bad. I sort of just get like a list of sort of for each meal. I have sort of like normally around three main meals, and depends on the day. Sometimes I'll have like little snacks pre and post training, and normally it is like sort of have this amount of X carbohydrates, so like rice, sweet potato, anything like that. He's like, have some protein, have some of this. And he sort of makes up my plan and I can sort of tailor it how I want. Yeah. But with um, situations like this where we got the short short notice, had a bit more weight to drop, it's pretty much he tells me what to eat, when to eat, and I just sort of follow through like that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, you that's just weigh it out as well? Yeah, like, yeah, okay. always. Everything sort of um, to the gram or to the milliliter tablespoon and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just kitchen scale becomes my new best friend for like the next, when I'm in fight camp pretty yeah. much. Are yeah. you watching your calories like... Um, in a sense, I am, but I don't count him or anything because yeah. he does all the he yeah. does all the brain work for me. So he he That's I've great, got I've got it? testing done yeah. like my BMR, my like TD total daily energy expenditure and stuff like that. So I sort of know the rough numbers and everything, but I just send it to him and I just it's one less thing I have to think about. Mm. I just have to bust out the scale, bust out the food, weigh it, heat it up, and then eat it sort of thing. Just on your levels, um, I just want to know, um. Volko on Jari. <laughs> <laughs> what was he taking the piss or nah, what? No, so what happened was... Um, you said you had testosterone. Of like, yeah, a little, little girl. Little yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Or a boy or something. I was like, he's yeah. got to be taking the piss. So what happened was I had this... I don't know if I still have it. I probably don't know, but it was like reds, like relative energy deficiency. is like sort of common in athletes, especially athletes that to cut weight in that. Yeah. And because I've been cutting a 61 for such a long time, I only actually used Geordie, the dietitian, for my first pro fight. So I had like nine fights before that where I was cutting weight myself. I'm talking, I was doing dumb things like I'd eat, just like I'd have like maybe some carbs in the breakfast and then I'll be training still the tra- um, same schedule I'm on now, but I'll be mm. eating like half the calories and then like yeah, yeah. fight week. I just wasn't eating enough, wasn't having enough healthy fats. And that actually, because of it, I'm not sure of the whole scientific explanation, but basically because my body was in such a um, large calorie calorie deficit for such a long time it actually sort of stops your other like hormone functions that so then wow. lucky enough we found out with that through geordie for my first fight camp with him because i think i was about three or four weeks out and he um messaged me straight away he's like oh go get all these blood tests done and i just want to see where you're at and then my doctor rang me that afternoon and he's like hey have you ever taken like performance enhancing drugs or anything and i was like just out of the blue i was like oh Weird. i'm yeah. like no nah, like i promise you i haven't like physically even looking at me i'm like i never touched anything like that in my life and he's like yeah. oh okay he's like come back in we're gonna have to get another test done and i like everything are good he's like oh your levels are just a bit low so then i went back in got more blood tests and it turns out i was like they had sort of like um the ranges say it was like 12 to like 50 or something i was like four times lower than the lowest range oh, I was, so i was yeah. off a chart but i was off a chart the wrong way sort of yeah. thing so it was like i think some of them was like 12 to like 40 or something i was like yeah. like four and then it was like 200 to like 1,000 something. I was on like 60 or something. Just like ridiculously low levels. How the fuck are you fighting when you've got no, I don't know. no drive? It's all up here. It's all mental. Yeah, but so then I ended up having to see like a hormone specialist and that. And then he said it was that energy deficit sort of thing. Yeah. And he had sort of like a... His answer sounds good in principle, but in theory it doesn't work. He's like, oh, just train less and eat more. So obviously yeah, that's yeah. a... That's the correct answer to do it, but yeah. it's I'm not like, going to happen for I'm you. I'm like, bro, I got to. I'm fighting like two weeks. I still got like another six kilos. I got to drop sort of thing. And he just sort of shook his head. But then after the fight, I sort of started changing up the diet, so including a lot of healthy fats, up mm. in the carbohydrates, and just sort of trying to minimize that sort of energy deficit. I was out for so long, and slowly trying to catch up in that. And then 
slowly but surely get back to baseline and everything. Have you been tested again? Uh, no, I've actually saved it for because I have to get blood tested. I think. 10 days out for my fight. Mm. So when I have might to go do, do that, then. I might as well yeah. just do it then sort of thing. We'll find How do you out. feel now? In Good day. Eh? Because apparently the biggest thing, I just had to put on some body fat. And over in Vegas, hmm. having COVID, Uber eats in three times a day. And yeah, yeah. where marijuana is legal, I definitely packed <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> on some kilos over there. <laughs> Don't oh, worry man. about that. So uh, hopefully that trip yeah, yeah. just fixed it all. And, yeah, all the inflammation's gone as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly right. I feel <laughs> like a new man. Yeah. I yeah. remember um, just on the – how you are saying you were doing your own sort of um, diet. Diet and everything dieting. like that, yep. Yeah, Mark was saying he was he was doing a similar thing and just um, – there was a few times in the fights where he was like fucking brain fog and – Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it would have been really yeah. hard to yeah. to compete. There's a like few that. times out of camp where I would have like brain fog like severely. Like I remember there was one sort of wrestling session, maybe my second or third fight – and it was just like, I was mentally like, physically I was there, but mentally I was like broken sort of thing. I was just off with it. I'm like, fuck, like, I just felt like shit in that. And then that's when my coach spoke to me. He's like, what have you been doing in that? And I was like, I've been eating like spinach and chicken and shit like that. And he's like, get some proper food into you and can fix you that way. But yeah, there's, yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that people don't understand. Like here's a perfect example was something dumb I did. I was a day out from weigh-ins and I had... I think I was pretty much on weight. I only had like 500 grams of that to go. And realistically, I just didn't have to drink water. I would have been on weight. But because I was hungry, in my head, I'm like, broccoli, this is back before I knew what I was doing. I had anyone to guide me. I was like, broccoli doesn't have a lot of calories. So I can eat a lot of broccoli. It's going to fill me up and I won't be hungry anymore. So I ended up eating like a kilo of broccoli, <laughs> which, which sounds good in theory because it fills me up. But then there's yeah. also another kilo of food weight in your yeah. stomach. Yeah. And then it's fibrous, so it sits in there. So I ended up having to go to the sauna the next day to just cut weight with just something as simple as like, instead of having that, you can have like peanut butter or something energy dense, but low volume, it's not going to weigh you down. Yeah, and just yeah, like yeah, yeah. adjustments like that, which you never know. And then just, or you can make it harder for yourself if you don't think, don't do things properly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How long has it been like a science? It is very much a science these days. Um, I think the original few, there was always nutritionists and that around it, but I don't think there was many sort of qualified dietitians. I think the first might have been like George Lockhart or Mike Dolce. Yeah, but um, then, Dolce diet. Yeah. yeah. And then I think he got sort of popular around that Ronda Rousey time and everything mm. like that. And then um, Geordie, the guy I worked with, he sort of really... He's been in it for a fair while now, but he really blew up because he does sort of all the Australian, New Zealand sort of professional. He does like Leon Edwards and stuff. So he sort of built up his brand that way. And he's sort of probably, he is the sort of top guy in the industry now. So I'm like fortunate enough to be able to work with him. And that's why whatever he tells me to do, it's just, it's good because it takes the thinking out of it. Mm. Instead of me coming home after training, trying to wear yeah, a heart yeah. rate monitor, figure out how many <laughs> calories I burnt, how many I can eat, what I should eat. I just come yeah. home, look out the sheet. He sent me and just, I'm done. Tell you what, that's not a bad thing for fucking everyone. Oh, 100%. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. You come home just from work or whatever and someone calls you up and says, this is what you're having for dinner. Fucking this is how you make it. Eat this, you yeah. Know, it's, <laughs> it's a, there's a there's market in that. Well, just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you get these boxes, you know, you see them at the supermarket yeah. and HelloFresh and stuff like that and it's cool but I remember when Hello, we got HelloFresh delivered yep. and it was just a few fucking carrots and a bit of meat and I'm like, you know, I thought it'd be all chopped up, ready to go, and shit yep. like that. But so you can actually just tell people what to eat. Yeah, exactly. It'll right. make it a lot easier, man. The kids aren't eating this shit this week. Well, fucking do this. You know, they'll eat that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell you what, not you're know, miles away from having kids, but the secret to getting kids to eat is just to make them go hungry. Why, why, gonna, wives aren't big on that, but you know, because they that, yeah. mums want to feed. Mm -hmm. But um, that worked a treat for me. I remember yeah, if I would, and that would be like speak, something I didn't like at dinner. I'd be like, oh, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to eat that. Mum's like, don't eat it. And then an hour or two later, I'd go out to her fridge and I'm like, oh, hey, mum, can I have that reheated, please? I'm yeah, hungry. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting anything yeah, else. Exactly right. that, I'm yeah. just gonna have to eat it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was someone. It was on a podcast, and he was kind of like a fucking. Could have been Jordan Peterson or someone like that. Yeah. And um, he was saying about his kids not eating and that, and he's just like, well, maybe he's not hungry. Like, how many times? Like, I've always tried to feed, force feed my yeah, kid yeah. dinner. Because yeah. it's dinner time. Dinner time, yeah, exactly but right. But he's, mine might not be fucking I hungry. Don't like, <laughs> yeah. I don't like eating dinner, man. I like a late lunch, and that kind of does me. Yeah. Honestly, I might have a snack at dinner. I have to have dinner because we're in a family, and yeah, that's yeah. what you Sit do. Sit down, have yeah, a that's that's time honestly, and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I like the idea of going to bed a bit hungry, you know? I think it's well, better you sleep for better, don't you? Yeah, sleep better for it. Yeah. Do you do any fasting or anything like that? Nah, no, I, I did when I was doing it um, wrongly at that, but yep. now I'm able to eat sort of 
breakfast, lunch, dinner, seven days a week sort of thing. Because you're training your exactly ass Exactly right, training make, right, yeah. yeah. Fasting sort of, I think like it's has its benefits to like some people in that for like general pop. Like it's really yeah, easy to tell yeah, someone right. if they want to lose a couple of kilos, like oh, I only eat between say 12 and 8. And mm. if they stick to it, it's going to work. It just shortens the time frame. But yeah. if you tell myself or someone who's training – three four even five hours a day sometimes like high intensity or don't eat for eight 16 hours of your day it's not it's gonna not go he's right. got no fuel yeah, in your yeah. gas tank sort of thing yeah yeah you don't want to be doing that <laughs> i think if you're training like you are yeah but um so where was the um hold it uh, getting back to the state so yep. you went to joe rogan's place yeah that was in austin texas so his new house the mcmansion uh, thing he got or was it the studio the studio oh, so yeah. yeah we went to Austin because we finished filming on the thursday and then we left for Austin on the Monday. You drove or you flew? Uh, flew. Oh, yeah, yeah. Flew from LA to uh, Vegas to Austin. Then yeah. we spent uh, Monday there, Monday night. And then we flew back home to like um, Australia Tuesday. But so Tuesday, Arvo was when we actually went to see Joe Rogan. So we got a training session in before. Yeah. His studio is right close um, to Temple and Austin. So oh, is that? Yeah, yep. I've seen the Instagram. Yeah, the training. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did our training session there. We went over to do the Joe Rogan. Bulk and Craig did that. I was fortunate enough to like be in the studio. He got to sort of watch it live and everything. Talk to his like few of the guys he had around, which was really security cool. or yeah. He had I think he had like one big personal security guy and just like a few other maintenance guys or something. I think yeah. But it was funny. Well, not really because we almost missed our flight because of it because. The podcast went longer than we expected sort of thing. And then so we're like scrambling back to get back to the hotel. Luckily, we sort of dropped our bags and everything off at the desk. Uh, yeah, but then yeah. we couldn't find an Uber or anything. And I think we had like 45 minutes before check-in finished. And it was like a 25-minute Uber or something. So we're oh, stressing shit, hard in that. Yeah, we finally managed to get one. And we're like, oh, we're in the clear now. Sweet. We go out onto the highway. It's fucking gridlock. Oh, shit. And oh, all man. I remember <laughs> looking over, and it was me, Volko, and Joe. We're in the back and just dead silence yeah, here. I remember stressed. looking at this phone, and old mate had the, like, Waze app or whatever. And it had from, like, green, like, five minutes to destination reached. Yeah. It went to 15 as orange. Then it went to 25 red, and I'm sort of oh. out of my window seat just looking out like, Fuck, man, I'm not getting out of America today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, here yeah. for a little bit longer, eh? Yeah, but somehow yeah. we managed to make it. I think we got right in as check-in closed. And we'll, yeah, because it was actually, the airport was so dead, we managed to sort of straight jump in. out, yeah. rush straight there, and we got in yeah. luckily and were able to get home. But I was like, fuck, imagine that. Oh, no, you stuck there again. Stuck there longer, yeah. <laughs> what was it? For, how long were you there for? Uh, I think it was 11 weeks and then the two-week quarantine as well. Yeah, when you got back. Yeah. Fuck. And a hotel long time. in Sydney? Yeah, it? at yeah. the Maritain on Sussex Suite. It yeah, wasn't yeah. too bad because mm. there was me, Joe and Alex, and we had, the, we had like a penthouse. So there was three bedrooms, a little balcony to train and stuff like that. So it was nice. Yeah. Did... um. Joe Rogan make you do the t- uh, swab test there? Yes, he did. The yeah. COVID, yeah. yeah, he had like the rapid PCR one, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it takes about fifteen minutes to do. Yeah, wow. Even he, he, uh, he does it too, and like all his staff member was daily. So as soon as we walked in, he had like ten tests done and ready, sort of thing. Fuck, because yeah, he does mention that he yep. does it a lot. Yep. His fucking nose must be all fucked up. Oh, it wasn't honestly. These ones, like I remember the first sort of COVID test they started doing in Australia, where yeah, they yeah. do it and you're yeah. Heads going back here, but now in the States and even here, some of the quarantine ones, they sort of just touch uh, us off. I think they realise, like, you don't need to poke don't someone. Need to go in all yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't need to get them really uncomfortable and stab their brain a couple of times. Don't it's fine if they got it or not. <laughs> yeah. well, my little two-year-old got it yesterday, man. It's yeah. fucking that long, you know, it's straight into the back of his nose. It's yeah. horrible, oh, man. Like, oh, it's brutal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of them. I've had too many. But fortunately, <laughs> because me and Volko got off lucky, actually, because we caught COVID... Whilst they were filming tough, all the boys had to get tested five days a week. <laughs> so they were getting five days yeah. a week, but because once you catch COVID, you're immune, complete immunity for 90 days after you test negative. Yeah, so yeah. with that, there was no, re- well, we didn't have to get tested. So then we can just chill and the boys get in over yeah, the space. Yeah. I think they had like almost 30 COVID tests or something. Fuck. Oh, so shit. poor Joe, he had 30, then he comes back, he's still getting tested in quarantine. We got yeah. out of quarantine, they still make you get a mandatory like day 16 test and everything <laughs> now. Like, because he didn't get it, did he? Oh, that Don't bloke like is immune because me and him were sharing the same apartment yeah. like room when yeah, I popped. Yeah. We like trained together. We we're like eating like table away from each other, like sweat, grappling, punching everything, yeah. and then yeah. no, nothing. 
nothing. So we got into that hotel, the one across the road on the Monday, and we were still worried because we still had Shane Young, Jamie Malaki, who had to fight. Mm. And we were like, fuck, like, I've trained with all me, Volko, all of ones who tested positive. We've all had some form of contact with these guys. So then yeah. they get a test on Tuesday and Thursday, I think, or maybe it was like Wednesday, Friday sort of thing. And then all we're doing, we're just in the hotel room across the road just thinking like, fuck, these poor blokes are going to pop, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny enough, like half of them, um, none of the other ones turned out they didn't pop or anything. So it was like, it was really, it was a it's weird strange, situation. Yeah, yeah, like apparently it might have had something to do when we became in contact with whoever gave it to us mm. and then you might not be able to pass it on for a few days and maybe we didn't have interactions yeah, yeah. at that point. But I don't know how it works, but in our head, I was thinking like, oh, the whole team's popped. It's we're yeah. the first four, yeah. the other six or whatever, they're just going to follow after sort of thing. Yeah, you'd hate to be someone that gives COVID to someone else, wouldn't you? Mm. Wouldn't be a good feeling. We well, can't do anything about it, can it's like we, no. we all get the flu and shit. Yeah. And, you mm. know, it's, that's what it is. You've got to live. Yeah. Got to live your life sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. that maybe they should test Joe Lopez for blood, like... He might have some sort of. Oh, he's got. He's he's a hundred percent has some yeah, kind of immunity to it. He, yeah, yeah. He's got fully vaccinated <laughs> too, actually. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah. So we, because part of the show, we also got offered to get the vaccines and yeah. that, and I was like, not interested. But funny enough, Craig Jones, who was one of the coaches, he yeah. actually took the vaccine. I forget which might have. Uh, was it for Moderna or something? I think he might have took, and it ended up swelling up his armpit like crazy off the first dose. Yeah, yeah. And then he was meant to compete the following weekend, and he had to pull out, and it ended up shifting down to his stomach. Holy! Oh, shit. I heard him talking. Yeah, Is that he, what he's talking yeah, about? Yeah, bro. Wow. And he had like a little belly pouch, and like Volker's <laughs> like, oh, you just pull your pants up over and hope it will like drain it. So he had like a fluid baby oh. on like his belly oh, sort of man. thing and he said yeah, when yeah. he was pissing it out it ended up looking like it was pissing gasoline almost like uh. just and then everyone like you speak to about it like doctors that like oh it's it's just a side effect and like that ain't what? a good side effect it's not that's that's exactly shit. right <laughs> they'll be worried yeah, yeah. Right. and apparently the first one's not that bad the second one's the worst one so he was offered to get his second one he's like fuck i gotta compete in two weeks yeah, so the first that. one did that he's like i'm not gonna get the second no, one because no. yeah. who knows what it's might be fucking yeah. kill me for all like I know. Sort of your thing. head or something. Yeah, like that. exactly right. So, Where does he live? Um, he's down in Puerto Rico now, but I think he's moving to Austin. And I feel the like Danaher death squad, like the least. He's just following that. Yeah, he is. Yeah, how but did, how did he talk them into moving down there to Puerto Rico? Because they have yeah. um four percent um total income tax. So off his DVD sales, t shirts, and everything, he just has to send all in the years. Like they take four percent. Fuck yeah. Off, yeah. So. It's a lot better than what yeah, everyone sure. else does. Yeah, exactly. Well, that, right. but it, when it, I think it's almost better for everyone to have that, but actually make these companies pay it. Because mm. if you look at um, like Foxtel, Amazon, mm-hmm. they make billions. They don't pay a cent. cent yeah. Apple, they pay fucking nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So we're better off to get five percent of the actual what they really Total take. Sum. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, you, right. and you can't write it off or anything. If you if that money's gone in, we're taking right. it. Yep. You can fucking get fucked. Yeah, hundred percent. I think we'd actually get more money out of it. You know. Yeah, yeah. J- sure. Just back on the um, ultimate fight, I like. Yeah. Um, Ortega seems like a bit of a knob. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is? What's your take on him? Uh, Did you have anything to do with him? Like, yeah, obviously, like we were seeing him fairly constant. In that I, I, I have to be careful what I say because it's only like. Yeah, that's it, right. Because that's there's four shift. episodes yeah, in, so four. still like eight episodes to go. But yeah, it's just he's not who he makes out to be. Like he's not. He's obviously not like a totally bad person or anything but the guy he comes off as like interviews and that like he's not who he is like he's a douchebag sort of thing like you can see he's a type of guy who would wait for sort of like when he slapped that like k-pop singer and stuff like that like he thinks he's a man like that latest clip volko put up where that was the day after the first four fights went on and then he's just sort of Calls him a shit person. Yeah, Volko, that was good. Man. Yeah, Volko calls him a shit person. <laughs> but then, like, so he, Aussie, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're just but, a shit person. Yeah, and it'll take you like a tax a team and stuff like that. And he's like, what are you like doing? What's like, going on? Yeah, there's yeah. no need for you to be like a douchebag. Like, yeah, the poor, a douche the, yeah these That's exactly right. um, four poor boys have pretty much worked their whole life for this opportunity. They lost. They're absolutely gutted about it. And then he's out saying, it's like, oh, your team can't win and just start like insoiled at the boys and that sort of thing. Just like a... Like, who fucking does who that? Does that? Yeah, that's legit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Reminded me of, like, the the quarterback in a, you know, like a shitty American movie. Just a douchebag. B-grade bag. villain? Yeah. Yeah, like legit. A douchebag, dude. Yeah. yeah. S- sleazy douchebag. <laughs> the way I fucking explain it. Yeah. 
But yeah. it gets good. Just keep watching. It gets good. Hey, what's it on? Uh, KO Sports. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah. there's um, anyone who doesn't have KO, I'm pretty sure there's a YouTube channel. There was. That, there oh. was? Did they get rid of that? They fucking <laughs> zapped it. Oh, no. I saw it. Because I went to I watch it the other night. And I was like, fuck, this bloke's put like the full three episodes yeah. up. I'm like, good on him. I'm like, I might just send this to mates. you like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Check it out. Because I was on KO and I... I wasn't watching it, so I got rid of yeah. it. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to see if it's on YouTube. And it was. It was, yeah. I watched the first three, and then I think two nights ago I tried to watch yeah, it. Got rid of it. And YouTube just played this ad that goes for the entire length. Oh, bullshit. So it's just in a circle, you know, like. Yeah. So you can't watch it. Fuck. I, I don't know how they found out. But I think Kay, it would be clever for Kayo to do that, though. So yeah. you get everyone hooked, they've watched three episodes, and then, you know, if you want to see the rest, you've got to come and jump on board. Kayo, is Kayo, can't you just pay by month? I think so. Anyway, yeah. and then you just yeah, I'll, it off. I'll get yeah. back onto it. But yeah, they get you with them free trials though. That's my thing. And you I'll, forget to, to turn them oh, off. Man. Yeah. Fuck! I got stitched up with like ancestry or something like that. Eh? <laughs> yeah. oh, I was yeah. bored in quarantine. I looked free, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, mad!" Like I'm like, "Oh, free trial!" Like just set a reminder, cancel in two weeks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Fucking forgot to do it. It was like forty five dollars, like a yeah. month of ancestry. I'm like, "Fucking hell!" I'm like, "This is ridiculous." I, I, I might still Fuck. be paying Foxtel. Foxtel, the, <laughs> they had the the Rugby Union World Cup last year. And yep. I didn't want to pay for it, and I hate fucking Roper Murdoch, but they had a one month free trial. Yeah. And it went for like, oh, it was one week or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And it went for like two months or two or three months, the the thing. And so I, I got all these old email accounts and I just opened up whenever I'd run out the two weeks, I'd cancel it, yeah. it yeah. if I can jump. But I, I must have missed one because I was going through my bank account and Foxy are taking money out. I haven't seen it for like a year. <laughs> wow. You know, I'd never watched the fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. So my old girl did that with um, Walking Dead. And watch like a whole season. Oh, nice! Just yeah, like making new emails, new accounts, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah why not? <laughs> why not? Yeah. He's got enough money. He's a prick. He's got all the money. He's got all the money. Yeah, yeah. no tax either, eh? Mm. Nah, no, no tax, man. <laughs> Give us five percent. Yeah, yeah. It. share it. Yeah, I'm gonna do a piss because I'm busting. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man, I broke the seal, but yeah, did you? That's a dangerous thing to start. Oh. Yeah, we had a discussion about that the other night. What is up with that? Once the seal gets broken. It's um, it's ridiculous. It's ridi- hey. Why? Well, you know, what's going on there? Because you emptied a bladder. Yeah. Um, it can't fall straight up straight away. It's, it gets worse as the night goes on. It does. So maybe that muscle, something weakens once, once you release it. Maybe it's because alcohol dehydrates you too, though. And maybe that just makes you piss more. Yeah, it does dehydrate. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it's dropping through there. Yeah. 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 I, I had my fair share of experiences of breaking seal with vodka Red Bulls. Oh yeah, and then it's yeah, it's it's woeful. That red, vodka's one thing, but that Red Bull that's so tough on your kidneys. Now you're actually better off to drink Wacka Changi than <laughs> Red Bull. <laughs> I could man. imagine. I remember there was this one point where so normally they'd have these sort of glass, this normal sort of Red Bull um, vodka sort of size glasses of that. Yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. we ended up starting to go to this place a bit, and we end up tipping this guy like one of the hostess sort of thing. This bloke, and yeah. he comes back with probably like that like liter jugs of like vodka red bulls <laughs> and he just shit. hands it to us and i'm like fuck there's probably like yeah that much vodka and the rest just straight sugar-free red bull yeah and then that was at like 11 o'clock or something so it starts off all right but yeah. then you look and you're like finish two or three of them you got yeah. like Holy shit. two liters of fucking red bull and like half a liter of vodka yeah. in you at like 3 p.m and oh yeah it just it escalates like that's the issue with red because <laughs> when i you know if going when i used to drink a lot more going to a party and that, when i was younger i'd always i'd drunk too much and then i see it droopy and then i'd know it's time to go home but red yeah. bull doesn't let that exactly happen. right so you should be going home and your brain switches off but your body's still fucking going you're still white just like yeah 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 it's potent that shit yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. It felt like, like you feel like you're going to have a heart attack as well. Oh, yeah. It's tough as a six pack on your kidneys, they reckon. And yeah. your liver and that, because it's so, it's so intense that yeah. you really need to dilute it with a litre of water when you're drinking it, man. So if you're on it all night, it's just fucking trash and everything. Yeah, I reckon at one point there was easily probably went through like, I think I would have went through like at least eight cans. Is yeah. that in, Ve- in, in Vegas? In Vegas, yeah, I was about? saying, yeah, because they gave us like normal pitch, like glasses, and then yeah. we ended up tipping the guy, and he came out with litre ones of them. So it was like that much vodka for a rest just straight Red Bull and Shit. two or three of them later yeah. you're you're blind but you're yeah. almost like a gram of caffeine like <laughs> yeah. like oh. ten coffees or like a triple scoop of pre workout yeah. or something. So you're Fuck. just yeah, it's ridiculous. No need for drugs when you got <laughs> no, that. Exactly shit. Right. 
It's not a good feeling though, is it? No. It's, not, it's like they're real like, I think I'm overdosing on like caffeine anxiety sort of feeling. Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. isn't good. Yeah, not good, man. <laughs> what do you think of the weight cut in the sport? Do you, um, do you like the 1FC kind of thing where they Nah, because they cheat that test, so... Because it's How that's a cheat? high, it? it's a hydration test. So a lot of the guys, what they do is, I'm not sure of a full science, but the way um, I got explained to me, I got it done for Jordy explained in that when I asked him about it, and there's a bit of sort of knowledge on it. But basically, they test like for hydration, hydration of your urine or something. Okay. So what people end up doing is they will sort of say if I have a kilo to go or something, they'll sort of. S- they know they have to sweat out the kilo to get on weight. So what they'll do is they'll drink distilled water. So it's 100% just straight water and they'll sit in their guts mm. and then they'll sweat out all the weight they have to do. So their blood is now full of this water, but they're sort of their cells and everything are dehydrated and they just hold the piss until they have to weigh in. And then when they have to weigh in, they just piss in the cup sort of thing. Fuck, there's so a way around everything. So there is, in man. a sense, yeah, it's yeah. almost worse because at yeah. least when you're fully hydrated, you can at least sort of, you can piss some of a weight out. You might lose like 200 milliliters of that, which ends up being 200 grams. And then that's a little bit of weight less off. But by you actually sort of having to hold like all this water, it just takes it from your cells. And so it's actually can be like worse in a yeah, sense. Yeah. And then, yeah, apparently other ways you see guys just like walking around in circles, just waiting, like holding their pisses <laughs> and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And I would rather do like a hard weight cut then have to hold a piss in for like some of the times these guys are like, I could not think of anything oh, worse. Yeah, yeah. It'd be so mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Plus you're like, Dehydrated yeah. as well. So what suck. you're saying that distilled water doesn't actually go into your system. Yeah, I think it goes straight to your bladder or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Your body, or maybe it's just normal that. water. But yeah, they yeah. end up just yeah they drink how much they need to drink to sort of get the piss through or whatever, and then they'll just sweat out the rest and not piss until they have to weigh in. Yeah, because yeah. they're, they're trying to keep it. Was it five pounds or something? Either way. I think so. I think it's just... Something like that. Yeah, like a few days out, you have to be X amount of pounds over and stuff like that. But then if you ask me, if you look at some of the fights, like Demetrius Johnson and that fighting, like he's fighting Bantam weights and that. He looked gigantic. Mm. So Yeah. And plus there's no public weighing, so who knows what goes on. But, but also, yeah. w- wouldn't fixing it, just having the weight, but actually having the scales right next to the fucking ring... Uh, and so on the day, you've got to be on whatever that weight is, and then you can't do that. And so you actually can't cut so much because you'll be fucked for the actual fight. Well, I feel like the problem, I feel like I don't have, I don't know like the w- proper way to have an answer of that because I think even if you do that, there's still guys who might be like, oh, I'll just sweat out an extra kilo or two and then I'll just weigh in and then I'll just smash some water and go on and fight sort of thing. Yeah, and then yeah. even though, like, oh, okay, they haven't cut as much weight as these guys who had like a 30. 24 to a 36 hour rehydration sort of protocol yeah yeah there might be still a lot more dehydrated of a brain everything so then you're at like a lot higher risk of like injury and oh, yeah, brain yeah, damage yeah. stuff yeah. like that so, so they're going to push it anyway i think yeah because yeah, yeah. it's got realistically if, they, if you're going to have to weigh in with like fighters or wrestlers that they're always there's always going to be guys trying to find a way around the system coming as big yeah, and yeah. as heavy as they can sort of thing mm. so i don't i'd personally Personally, I don't mind like the 24 to 36 hour weigh-in show I fight on Eternal. That's normally around uh, morning weigh-in the day before. Then you get all day and like half the next day to weigh-in. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, over in um, Abu Dhabi, Fight Island, the same thing. The boys got like a decent around like 36, almost 40 hours. But then some of the UFC shows, you might only get 24 hours in that. Mm. And I think that's reasonable enough to sort of get you back to like a hydrated baseline where you can go and fight. But then again, like who knows what it actually does to you long term in that. Yeah. You look at someone like Figueredo, who I think walks around to like 165 out of camp. He got down to like 152, which is almost like maybe like 69 kilos or something, 68. Then he ends up having to drop like I think he did like 17 pounds of water or something to get to 125. Jesus he, Christ. Yeah, so he, yeah, he went from 165 to yeah, 125. Um, Fucking hell. So 40 pounds. So, yeah, and I think in Four. water weight or something, he lost like, it was either water weight or total body weight. He lost 17% of his body weight, which is equivalent to legit losing a leg. Fuck. They did like, <laughs> yeah, and so oh, it's man. ridiculous. That like is some of the weight, like awful. that's an yeah. extreme. You're like, mm. how do you answer that? Does he move up a division? It, Maybe more divisions? Um, do you feel there should be more divisions as if you... I feel like there should, some but gaps. I, I think one, the 25, 35, 45, and that works well. The mm. thing, but when you get to f- um, 55, then it goes to 70. So you might only, yeah, you yeah. might weigh like... Exactly right. You might weigh 178. So what's that? 177. 
170 is like 77 kilos. So maybe you might be like 81, 82 or something like that. So you can either drop down to 77 kilos, which is four kilos, that's nothing. Or you might have to drop 14, like a lot more weight to get down to that 70 kilos. So I feel like if they did like 155, 65, 75, 85. Same yeah, thing yeah. with like 185 and 205. That's 20 pounds, mm. that's 10 kilo. If you, that's so much. You might walk around like. at like 215, so yeah. you could, being that big or something, you could drop 10 pounds, 5 kilos on just no issues whatsoever yeah, but yeah. for you to actually go down to that 185 mm. it's that massive yeah. gaff again sort of and thing and what's the cap on the heavyweight i think the heavyweight 260, cap 265 F- that's a big difference yeah 265 and i think it's 205 humans. yeah or 225 yeah yeah because i was listening to a yeah. podcast actually it was don fry and yeah, Oliver Joe Rogan, yeah, and they were one. saying like you get poor um super heavyweights you can't even cut down to make 265 so you should just have like I think that would be odd. Why not have yeah. another division? I think they should have a, just a juice weight division because obviously there's. Yeah, guys I would yeah. watch that. Yeah. Just <laughs> get even if it's not UFC, just some promotion. Just get yeah. like the best big guys pumping full of whatever they want to yeah. take and be like, yeah, yeah. it's just an unlimited yeah. one round fight. Just I'll, go yeah, I wanna, for it. I want to see that. I want to freak watch. shows. Who doesn't yeah. want to see him sort of thing? <laughs> I want to see the drug and steroid Olympics because <laughs> yeah. I want to see how fast the guy can yeah, actually yeah, run right. if yeah. there's no fucking testing because I want to watch and see if he can do the turn yeah. or just run straight into the wall. Yeah, yeah. I reckon after watching get Icarus, <laughs> yeah. I don't trust any of him. Yeah. Oh yeah, Icarus yeah, opens that, a lot that, of eyes. Yeah, eh? I was a bit skeptical and after watching that, I was like, fuck, there's a lot that goes no, into it. They're all doing it. I mean, yeah. back, oh, 100%. Oh, yeah, also, yeah. back in the day something. in the Olympics, uh, um, and Ben Johnson beat Carl Lewis, oh, in the yeah. and it was fucking brilliant, man, because Carl Lewis was the golden boy, and I hated that guy. Even I thought the sun <laughs> shone out his ass, and Ben Johnson, the rough nut, beat him, but he... You know, he, uh, he got pinged for steroids and that. Yeah. But it turns out years later, Carl Lewis was on the motherfuckers anyway. Yeah. Yeah. He was just on better stuff. Exactly. You know? yeah. So uh, they're all kind of doing it. Apart from maybe, I remember when uh, Bolt first came out and they he, they were all saying, all the Yanks saying, no, nah, he's being juiced up and all that bullshit. But the thing with him, he was just such a different size because yeah. sprinters were always short. Yeah, he was really long, wasn't he? If yeah. he could keep up with them in the first 40, then the legs got going yeah. and that's what... So Didn't they do a leg, the a leg span thing on him? And he's, it was he's, massive. Yeah, it's like Once double those legs were going, yeah, exactly he's doing right. one, yeah. one movement for their two or three, you yeah. know? Have you ever seen the... Um, he talks about, like, the night before he was really worried about getting, like, spiked or, like... Okay, yeah. Well, that's a thing that can happen with as well, the food. Eh, man? Yeah, 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 that's when um, you fight away in, like, countries. Like, you've got to be sort of really careful what you eat. Because imagine, like, I don't know sort of many places that might do it but i'm sure i've heard stories that like even just old pride stories where like guys would go over to japan and that to fight and then they'd go out to some <laughs> restaurant and they'd sort of see they might oh, chuck some like raw eggs or stuff like that in yeah. there and just yeah even brazil or something like imagine if you're going to um brazil to fight jose aldo and you might have like who knows might be a diehard chef supporter who just put know. 10k and he see you walk Fucking in he might own. be like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 some of this on a side eh, sort of thing so well, yeah they reckon, be careful. Happened, they reckon that happened to the new zealand rugby team yeah to the all blacks um, when they lost to South Africa, not to say South Africa played really well. This is yeah. back in uh, the Manda- Mandela days, yeah. Yep. And it was good that South yeah. Africa won, but the All Blacks were fucking unbelievable. That Jonah Lomi just came out yep. of the blocks. They they were unbeatable. You know, that Matt Damon made a movie about it. Yep. And yeah, and they ended they up did. getting they beaten. They left that bit out though, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. Beaten <laughs> overtime. But during the game, you can see some of the All Blacks running off the field, running back. They were diarrhea and vomiting, yep. man. And then it came out, someone wrote a book later, um, the waitress got paid money to um, to slip some shit in their food. Fucking hell. And I remember working at the Heritage, like a local venue yeah, there, yeah. and Russell Crowe was playing, you know, he's yep. in a band and that, and he brought his own chef in. And, um, and I thought, oh, what a wanker thing to do. But then I thought about it, I'm like, hold it, people hate Russell Crowe. Yeah, exactly. Would you, <laughs> you wouldn't you put it past someone, eh? <laughs> fucking wouldn't yeah. put it past them, nah. man, you know? So Didn't he throw a phone at someone? Yeah. <laughs> a reporter know. or something? Well, it wasn't. He could have shot them. He was in the States, you know? No, I like big old Russ. I'm, I'm trying to get his email to get him on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be over there. <laughs> no, ah, it's great. He nailed me with the fucking podcaster. Yeah. Um, yeah, where are we going with that? Oh, Food. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. anyway, you saying Bolt. He said he ate fucking KFC the night yeah, before. Chicken nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably not the worst thing to get, sort of thing. Yeah. At least you know I was like fast food and you stayed yeah, on him. Yeah, what, and it, one I yeah, Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He still broke the record, so it wasn't too bad. Worked well for and he slowed up at the end as well. Yeah, have you seen the meme yeah. where he's running along with the TV? No. <laughs> <laughs> Someone photoshopped the TV. Yeah, bloody hell. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I was like in the um, last dance where, what's his name, got poisoned from that pizza or whatever. 
uh, what was it says this Rodman or something? I think before oh, one of the games or something. Yeah, same thing. They yeah, ordered I'm a Domino's something. or something. Yeah. And then they they said there was like four people who came to deliver the pizza and like didn't think anything of it. I might have got the player wrong, but yeah, yeah. same thing. They gave it to him the next morning, like laxatives or something, in and just fucked with him, sort of thing. I'm yeah. like. Uh, high level sports happen. They're always going to Try and get Fuck an edge yeah. Or something Man, There's a lot yeah. of money yeah. in, in sport eh? Especially yeah. with betting on it Definitely Do they test you Your level Nah so uh, That's a big misconception Because I was actually Speaking to one of the boys Today at the gym about it And pretty much The only um, Promotion that tests Is the UFC Wow No way really? Yeah so a lot of people Don't know that Yeah so So 1FC Bellator no, nah, I think they I know, might be Bellator like... Bellator do some cowboy shit. I feel like they might be like, oh, who was I listening to? I think it was Rico Van Hooven or something, but he's in glory kickboxing. Yeah. And that's they test, but their test is, hey, we're going to drug test you on fight day. <laughs> <laughs> so just you let you take, know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, right. hey, we might yeah. take some of your piss on fight day sort of thing. But yeah, only the Uf- UFC only does it because they they have USADA, yeah. who actually um, yeah, does yeah. it all. They but no it. other promotions have any sort of... Agencies or that to sort of test in that. So like one Bellator, PFL, it's all open slubber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We well, even yeah see like remember Mark Hunt when he fought that Brock, uh, Brock Lesnar, <laughs> yeah. And like the dude, he lost. Yeah. He, like, well, not lost, but he fucking he, he got caught with steroids. He was yep, on them exactly and, right, and it still stood anyway. Well, they, like, well, why they bother wavered, testing them? If they wavered his um, sign up, didn't they? they? Yeah, there was something to do. You had to be six months. Was it six weeks or something? In the pool or something? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't remember what it was, but. They yeah, knew the, it was going to fail, so they just... Yeah. yeah it was he came like, straight from WWE where he looked like a fucking monster trap. again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as if he wasn't juicing. It was like with um, Anthony Smith just came out, was when he was fighting John Jones. Like, he got oh, a yeah. phone call every day saying, hey, John's failed with drug tests and that sort of thing. Fucking hell. And just... Yeah, just... What about the stories of him hiding under the cage? Cage and that, yeah, <laughs> to avoid the drug <laughs> test. And she like, just <laughs> surreal. Are they gone, yeah? yeah. Fucking looking for the... And then you still see people like, oh, no, nah, it's just pulsing. It's just from... It's from an old cycle or something like that. It's like, oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Them, yeah. them fucking dick pills that was 7-Eleven yeah. on the corner. That's what made you piss on him, mate. For sure. Fuck, at least admit it. Like, I think yeah. people would like him more if he just went, just you know what, out. I fucking yeah. did it. Yeah, exactly right. Like, when he said to DC that he beat him from... And he was partying kind of thing. Yeah, he's like, I didn't even train for you. Yeah, <laughs> I can smash you. So. What was that quote? It was like, I was snorting cocaine off hookers like a week before or yeah. something like that, and I still beat you or something. Isn't so he like, married? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's uh, he's a character. He's like the Mike Tyson, but he won't come out. You yeah, know, like yeah, the legit, Mike Tyson yeah. of MMA, but he just won't like live in that personality yeah i'd rather see him be he's himself. a bad guy trying to be good yeah or he's just yeah. needs to be a bad guy that just embraces it sort mm. of thing yeah, yeah have you been in a fight like could you you did eight fights amateur uh was it? Or nine? Eight, nine nine yeah. nine fights yeah with anyone that you suspected was like taking some gear or um yes and so only one but Obviously, I'll, I won't try and name names or anything no, like that because, them, but, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's like I can show you some photos after and like this bloke was jacked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah, like even then, I feel like I don't know because um, trying to think anyone else. I don't think so. I think at this sort of level, it's not very common sort of thing. I feel like once you start getting you international reckon? and that sort of thing. Yeah. Or maybe it is, and I'm just real oblivious to it. But because I used a long time ago <laughs> training at gyms and there was a bit yeah. getting around. That's, I think it'd be Because yeah. no one wants to lose Yeah and I feel like The biggest thing with that sort of stuff I feel like is If you need to take something like yeah. that I feel like it's a lack of self-confidence mm. It's like Oh I don't think I can do this naturally So I'm going to yeah. have to get a boost It'll and play I feel on like, your mind I, so it, I feel I like If you have to go into a fight <laughs> Faking it Faking it yeah, Then yeah. I don't think you're mentally prepared To t- really take a fight or anything like mm. that Obviously, you're going to get all the advantages and that, but what happened if you do, say, there's plenty of guys who, like, juice their whole career up to the UFC, and then they stop, and, like, imagine their mentality, be like, oh, my whole career is sort of built off a lie of... Vitor Belfort. Exactly you know? right. <laughs> a, 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 a yeah. huge, like, yeah. There's a good video. It's, like, top 10 um, UFC um, physiques that melted post you start up. <laughs> yeah. You see just killers come up in that, <laughs> then as soon as they came in, it's just, just like dad, downwards because... Dad bods. Exactly were, right. What yeah, can you yeah. do when you sort of... You're old. This whole time yeah. with... All these extra hormones, everything trying to sort of mm. keep you up. And when you finally yeah, yeah. can't use it, it's like 
mentally you're just not going to be the same that's person. right and, and if you've been taking them a long time your body's not used to producing the hormones you need anyway yeah. so you and that's why we should up. have the steroid fight league but then <laughs> they, they, can, they can go on and we can yeah. keep watching them steroid olympic steroid yeah. fight yeah, league yeah, yeah. but they got to get paid a shit like because it's oh, gonna yeah. fuck them up so like yeah. it's yeah, 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 if you guys are going to do that, okay, we'll, we'll set you up because it's for entertainment. But it would be interesting. Who the fuck? Who's that? Um, he's an African American guy who fights in Bellator sometimes, yeah. um, but only when they have it in like, you know, like Native American fucking yep. grounds because they don't test there. Oh, he's yeah. um, Leslie. Someone Leslie. I can't think. He used to wrestle in yep. WWE and he's... Oh, he oh Bobby Lashley. That's it. Bobby Lashley. Lashley. <laughs> Holy fuck. He that should bloke be in, is jacked, yeah. dude. Yeah, he's Have huge. you ever seen that No, you got to put Holy it Oh, up, man, he is massive. I think he was in the army or something first, then he went to WWE, but this guy's yeah. taken all the juice. Is yeah. he? There's yeah. no juice left. Shoulders <laughs> like this sort of man. thing, trapped up yeah. here. Yeah, 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 he's just jacked. He's like someone drew a cartoon of the most jacked person you've ever seen. I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a, I'm, in, I'm into arm wrestling, you know, not yeah. good at it, oh, but, yeah. uh, but I dig it. There's an old yeah. guy, he's 68, um, I think his name's Dennis Lupke, and he looks like the fucking granddad from Dragon Ball Z. And he's this. Oh, Roshi. Yeah, Roshi, I love man. Dragon he's Ball got Z. The, you know, Roshi goes <laughs> yeah. like this. And he puffs himself Fuck, up. It's ridiculous. He's 68, <laughs> and he is jacked to the motherfucker, man. And he's huge, and he's still taking on like these Ukrainian arm wrestlers, man. He's. he's Dennis Lupke, man, he's fucking. Yeah. He might just lose, but he'll beat. You yeah, know, probably competitive mo- with him. Com- he's competitive, yeah. man. Like Fuck fucking, hey, he took on De- Dennis Ka- Klepenkov, who might well be the strongest man that's ever arm wrestled. Oh Jesus! And he fucking came so close, and he was like sixty three when he when he fought him. You know, yeah. And he fucking close, and at the end, Klepenkov like gave him a hug and was just shaking his head. Holy Fuck. shit! Almost yeah. got my ass kicked. That's, by an a ex- that's a weird sport, isn't it? Well, it's strength's the last thing to go, you know. Yeah. So it's a uh, fucking arm wrestle is a great sport, man. I'm, I got into it for a bit of a joke, yeah. actually. We, we spoke about it recently. You're talking about chicken nuggets might not be the worst food for you. But the, there was just a world arm wrestling match by this yep. guy, um, Canadian guy, he's the world champ now. Uh, what's his name? Devin La- Larratt. Yep, yep. And he's fighting monster Michael Todd. No one's beaten Michael Todd in the 80s. He's this fucking bare disease top looking cat. He's got this King's movie where he gets under the table. And so your elbow's like this. Like you have to break his elbow to get his arm down, man. <laughs> and. Um, <sighs> And so no one, even even the Ukrainians and yep. shit, won't take him on. And Devin Larratt got the offer to do it. And Devin, Devin's a great arm wrestler. Mm-hmm. And then for the last three or four months before the match, match was a couple of weeks ago, he just fucking ate pancakes. And you thought it was a joke. And his wife's saying, what are you doing? You need to eat greens and get your... And he goes, nah, man, something to be said about size. <laughs> I need to get fucking big. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows him at like two o'clock in the morning, he's got a fucking litre maple syrup and he's going... And he fucking drinks a whole litre of maple syrup. He put on... He, he didn't let us know how much he put on until the weigh-in. Yeah. And he put on like 40 kilos. 40 Ooh, or, holy shit. Yeah. Wow. That's like, like a whole nother litre. Oh yeah, he was shit because he's six five. Yeah, and I think he walked around. He got up to what three hundred ninety eight pounds or something like that. Oh. So like it's fucking fucking massive, massive. fucking hell. So <laughs> and he walks out. He's and it's this huge gut. He's saying my yeah. guts are f- fucked. But and Michael Todd looks at him. Michael Todd's this jacked, huge motherfucker, and he looks at this <laughs> this beast. Just a fridge walking towards him, a fridge with some and, legs. And the fridge oh, just God. had this. And he goes, "What? What? That junk food? It's all shit for you. It's not. It's going to kill you. But it's got this energy to it. This instant energy. Yeah. And yeah. fucking arm wrestling, you need instant power. Yeah. And fucking, it, it was it was wasn't even a match, man. Just crushed mm. him. Just crushed him, man. Yeah. You know, it got to the point. Michael Todd made too much weight. Too much. Just and he was. He wasn't just eating. Yeah, he was he's fucking lifting, yeah. lifting, yeah. And, and, and they got yeah. all this. And they do this shit with it because arm wrestling is not a, really about a bicep. Because yep. if you can't get your wrist in the right spot, you can't engage. So okay, if, yep. if you, it's more like hand wrestling. So if you can get the hand in this certain spot, spot yep. they're fucked. And so he was doing all these like lifting like 20, 30 kilos with his wrist. Fuck. Like, <laughs> no, Fuck. Like, I have seen um, fucking crazy Triple G shit. do that actually. Yeah, them the kettle bo- yeah. Yeah, kettle yeah, yeah, they flip it and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Like, them and rock climbers do a little like a sort of grip strum stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, it's, yeah. Like uh, what, this, this maybe this the best in the world. This guy Levan, mm-hmm. he's doing a hundred kilos in one arm. Like curls, fucking, curls, oh, man. Fuck. Hundred kilos, man. It's fucking insane. Imagine what? that. Fuck. That's more than a person. Dungeon, oh, he, he's he's bigger than Lorette. Like he's fucking Fuck. must be pushing five hundred pounds. Well, there you go. Like, they're huge. They've already got their own fucking. Oh, Daryl, Daryl, yeah, Larry was saying, man. Like it's 
it would be nice for, for everyone to to have a son or someone come along and yep. test them. But you're saying most of the tests are shit anyway, and yeah. it all gets fake and everyone fakes it. So exactly right. Arm wrestling because it's not not that much money in it at the moment. Yep. No one gives a shit, and everyone it just does. You're only really in it just to fucking see who the best is. You yeah, know? true. And who's going to take it that far? Yeah. You know, if you're prepared to it's take like it. that. What's that one? The slap. Ones they do. Oh, oh what is I, that? I, I, I've yeah. got into them videos in quarantine. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna lie. I was watching a fair bit of them. They just line them up. The bang. My, my son, like, who's what? that fucking Belarusian guy? guy? Nah, no, this is uh. flubby little. Guys called like the the <laughs> what's he's like the beaver or something they call him and he looks like nothing he looks like a works a video easy or some <laughs> shit <laughs> and he just takes these slaps from yeah. these monsters and his little big wobbles and that and then he he just knocks them out man like that's the issue with it is he the but, guy that goes like that and like yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. lines it up yeah. lines it up like, yeah yeah. yeah. But they're allowed to use the palm. Yeah. It's fucking weird because you just knock, you can kill yeah. some motherfucker in the temple. Oh, 100%. With a palm. Yeah. Bass you know, rooting in the early the, days. It should be the it's fingers. This video yeah. 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 YouTube videos are good with that. Oh, it's palm it? strikes, yeah. it's self defense ones. They're yeah. gold. Yeah. yeah. Just was that that bald, <laughs> that bald short guy? The bald yeah. short, but yeah. Bounce, yeah. Oh, bouncer. Yeah. Fucking intense, that guy. Bust. Yeah. Someone's coming at you with a knife. But fucking do this. He smashed the glass fucking into the neck. Yeah. Yeah, he's straight to kill. Yeah, he was no fucking. Around, no, but that slapping Dutch. thing it's 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 a sport. I don't know mm. if it'll ever how much they can take. Like you can get you, they get concussed every time they oh, fucking oh, yeah, exactly do it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like asking for CTE. Yeah, yeah. It is. What's your thoughts on CTE in MMA? It's um, not I feel like it's it's one of the things where it's always going to be around, but obviously still fighting. I just tend not to think about it. I feel like just obviously you got to be aware. So like it's not like I'm comp- obviously you know how it works and like. Um, repeated head trauma and everything like that, but I feel like if you if you're worrying about that when you're fighting, it's just something. It's a trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly Another right. Thing. So I the way I look at it is like whatever happens in a fight, a fight that's it's always going to happen regardless. But I feel like control and training is pretty much the best way to do. Mm. I feel like if like because we train hard, but we train very smart, so, so we're not getting hit in the head all the time. Exactly right. So yeah. we had our hard sparring day today. But our hard sparring is sort of hard against guys at your own skill level and stuff like that. And you, you trust them. Exactly They're right. not going to try and take your head off. They're hitting you with hard shots, but they, if they might hit you here, whereas some guys will try and hit and follow through. They're trying to finish you exactly off. Exactly right. Yeah. There's like very, I, don't, I can't remember the last time we had like a concussion or even just like physical injuries from like someone going too hard or anything like yeah. that. I feel like if you train in a real controlled environment and that, and you're fighting, say, every three four months like most guys do like it's not that bad sort of thing but okay. i think old i think the reason it's sort of so relevant now if you look back at like the old school style of training where um they'll just have gym wars oh, guys would go into yeah. the gym and they would fight every single day yeah, so you imagine yeah. doing that for 10 years there's obviously going to be a lot of Mark trauma was saying and stuff like he that he was 16 and he was fighting like 30 year olds or yeah. some shit yeah full grown men full like, grown yeah. men just full and contact. going to war yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. right yeah it's crazy well it's a good way Good saying the boys have is like you don't get paid in the gym. Fucking that's, a. That's yeah, a good that's right. You're not. We're not. If people start sparring hard, you can either match it, you can sort of claw them out. But at the end of the day, if we start swinging for fences and I get concussed or you get concussed, that's thirty days you can't have contact. That's thirty days out of proper training. That's mm. more. That's unnecessary trauma. That like there's no need for. It's yeah, good to yeah. spar hard, but you have to be able to do hard and controlled. Where I feel like. The old old school guys. The reason it's so prevalent now and that you see it so often yeah. is because purely they they it was, it was they took too hard, many hard, shots. Hard, hard, yeah, yeah, hard. You yeah. see guys they get knocked down, inspiring like oh, and I get back up, finish around, so don't be a pussy sort of thing in that. Whereas realistically, if you cop one and you get down, it's like you're done for thirty days less rest, get your brain recovery and everything yeah. like that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So I think with all the information coming out, it's the science is getting better to help prevention, mm. but. Then again, who knows? We can only see what's going to happen yeah. in like the future years. Do you and everything. test for it? Have you had any tests for it? No, I think they do some stuff with like eyes and that. Maybe you can yeah. test, but no, I'm not. Until I, once I retire and stuff, or once I start slurring words, or I can't tie my shoelace, so I get tested <laughs> yeah. for it. Until then, I'm, I feel like I'm would, all right. Yeah. But wouldn't you like a base? You know, like get it done, get one just to see where you're at. And then like a CTE or something. Yeah, I got. I had to get um scans done when I got like the testosterone issue and that. Well, there you go. Every, everything was fine then, so I'm hoping it's just. Well, yeah, you, it's fine. you've got a baseline. Yeah. To see in five, ten years. Oh yeah, exactly right. See where you're right. in your game. Most of the wins, it's not like boxing where it's a knockout. Like it's, well, it's normally got, on the ground, yeah. isn't it? Like it's yeah. So uh, MMA ends up on the ground pretty I much. I think the it? reason MMA is not as bad for CTs, like say boxing, and that is obviously the strikes in MMA they're brutal, like. 
you can't compare a knee or a shin or something oh. to like a fist with a sort yeah, of yeah, eight tw- ten ounce gloves or that. But the biggest thing was boxing. You got two targets. You got the body or the head, and yeah, yeah. a lot of the strikes are absorbed by the head. And then also with the knockdown rule. So I can get look at Tyson Fury. He was out cold against out a cold, terrible yeah. concussion. He gets up, he can still fight. Zombie. Exactly right. And how many guys you see in boxing, they can get cleaned up. And realistically, in MMA, you get knocked down, the ref calls it, you're done. Boxing, you might get knocked down once. Yeah, yeah, you might fight another five, six rounds, getting knocked down a few more times, just mm. copping punishment. I feel like that's where the yeah. sort of differences of it are. With yeah, sort of yeah, the that's damage right. and everything. Because the rule is MMA, if you can't defend yourself, you've lost. They'll call it off, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Plus the strikes are so diverse. You've got like the leg kicks, the calf kicks, the body, there's so many. And then like you said, in the grappling exchanges, it's not as mm. much impact on the just yeah, head and yeah. everything. But sometimes the blows and injuries can be worse when you see like two leg clashes or nasty yeah, yeah. gashes and that. But I think compared to like actual brain and like traumatic injuries, it's yeah. not as bad. Your leg's going to heal. Well, yeah. they, right, yeah. they say that it's the repeti- repetition, isn't it? Yep. Not, so it's not like the one big... It's not that one big off shot that's going Yeah, it's yeah. more the, the jabs in the face. Exactly right. Then. Well, that's what Mark was saying as well, like the hard mm. sparring that he did. Fucking how many rounds of sparring has he mm. done, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking mm. wild. What, 15 years or so? Yeah, yeah. Fuck, you can only imagine. You get some guys who leave sparring with like headaches and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. he was leaving blurry eyes, blurry vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And no one told him, you know, just just what happens. It's the old school, yeah. Like, oh, you got you had some hard rounds, just yeah, gonna feel yeah. a bit off for a day or two, and then get back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. yeah. You guys are fucking crazy, I tell you. So I look at that. It was funny actually because with Volker, he used to play footy, and we ended up mm. watching the State of Origin in quarantine. And even yeah. then, we're watching it. We're like, Winston, like. Especially him, like, how the fuck did I used to do that? Like, yeah. just blokes just running full well, on at each other um, and Tarek, stuff like that. Well, the boys had Tarek Sims yeah, on. Yeah, we said Tarek Sims on, and yeah. he was just going Queensland. through his fucking injuries. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he's talking about his year, and they get six weeks off at the end of the year, with well, yeah. not training, and, like, four of those are taken up through surgery. Like, every fucking, he's been professional 12 years, and 11 of those years, or 10 or 11, he's had surgeries at the end of the fucking fuck season. Fucking hell. Yeah. yeah. And, like, yeah. major, his whole groin reconstructed and shit. Fuck it's hell. a heavy game, mate. Eh? I remember yeah. Sean Timmons actually after footy, he he said he couldn't run five meters. His knees yep. were that blown out in that. Yeah, just yeah, too yeah. far. Yeah, I could imagine. It's just sports like that, even like uh, NFL and that, with just like mm. constant helmets and just head bashing and well, stuff that's like the that. Thing. It's crazy. Boxing's the same. You know, when they brought the gloves in, the injuries got worse because you can only hit someone so mm. hard with a f- naked fist. A fist, exactly. They're breaking yeah. your fucking fist and all that. Yeah. So no yeah. one ever... I think in the whole time when it was old stand-up, stand-and-deliver boxing, I don't think anyone ever died. Well, they've got bare yeah. knuckle now. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, as, as the back, is it? Yeah, bare knuckle, knuckle FC, yeah. yeah. I think, what does they normally say? They say the gloves are for the hands, not the actual protection of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you punch this table as hard as you want with your hand, you can only go so hard before you break hand. Mm. Put a glove on, you can punch it freely as hard yeah. as you want. And that's yeah, yeah, sort that's of, right. It's like a paperback tree. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. still wrapping the hand, so they've got some protection. Yeah, don't they? I think it's very minimal, though. It's just sort of enough to cover the knuckles and that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, but that looks fucking painful. Oh yeah, yeah, there's some like bloody some nasty nuts. cuts in that. Yeah. Oh, it'd be horrible. Oh, shit. <laughs> Give me a hard leg kick any day than like a bare right hand to the face. Yeah. With um, we we're talking about you mentioned the calf kick, and yep. that was something that kind of people were like, "Holy shit, that shit works." Yeah. Like, do you see another overlooked technique or something? Yeah, that um, that you think might be a key to. I'm not sure because. Trying to think what was before the calf kick, like what sort of revolutionized the sort of thing. But like as you say, like the leg kick, calf kick change really sort of changed the meta of how fights are won in that. Mm. Like Volko versus Holloway is a perfect example. Like every time Max would step into range, or even against Aldo, Volko would just kick. Whereas everyone used to think a leg kick was there to sort of try and like inca- yeah, incapacitate yeah. the leg in that and sort of cork it so you can get your other strikes out of it. Whereas a leg kick can be as simple as when they step into your range, you can flick it. They're gonna have to sort of Check it or be aware, or they're just going to cop it and then it sort of disrupts the rhythm. So it's sort of like oh, a good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, it breaks yeah, it up a bit. Breaks it up. So yeah. instead of them sort of flowing again to the stance, they pop a kick, like, ah, oh, fuck, I've got to reset and go again. So, and then the calf kick is just sort of like a, just if you get that spot, it hurts. I had my fight on the Gold Coast, a short notice one at 66, and I end up copying probably 20 or so like kicks on my left leg. And by the third kick, like, it was funny, after the fight, everyone's like, oh, why didn't you check the leg kicks and that? I'm like, fuck, after the third kick, I couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> and then I've got, I, I got a, a fucking, um, what's it called, an ultrasound done, like, 
a oh. year or two ago, like yeah. just for a different injury that I had a knee bursa. And then they're going over my LCL and like, do you know you have a calcified LCL? I was like, what is that? I was like, what does that mean? Like, I don't know, but you've like, you caught so much like um, blunt force trauma to it. I was like calcified over it. Fuck. And that was from that fight. Like just copping wow. them leg kicks, just like calcified in that. So is that now, a good thing though? Does that um, mean it's tougher now? Or? I feel like it might be tougher. It has, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. haven't heard it since. Yeah, like, yeah. It feels harder, I guess, in a sense. But yeah, it's still not a fun sort of thing to deal yeah. with. But yeah, like them leg kicks sort of change the game. That's completely. a tight kick, kickboxing thing. I was remember talking to my mate Don, who's a trainer yeah. down in Melbourne. And um, he used to be a bit of a blur back in the day in Auckland, and then he was with all his rugby league mates at this pub, and there was this tight. Wasn't he? Hang on, wasn't he a Muay Thai professional? Well, yeah, he was. Yeah, well, he's, he's a big <laughs> trainer. He's just this guy. Just that, this guy. Yeah. Does a bit. <laughs> yeah. we'll, get him, we'll get him on the show when we, <laughs> when we can get down there. But yeah, uh, some some shit went on with this Thai guy, and he was yep. tiny, and, was, and Don was around with all these huge Tongans and Samoans, and this dude just leg kicked all of them and fucking dropped Drops them. Drops them like sucks of shit. Yeah, yeah. man. Dropped 100%. every single one of them. And he ended up training Don. Uh, wow. I think, yeah. Don said, How yeah. the fuck did you do that? You yeah. know? I yeah. feel like people don't because yeah. you sort of the way I like to put it is if someone's untrained and you like punch them the leg, it's gonna cork and I'm like, ah, oh, that hurts. And it's like now imagine taking a full blowing kick off someone who's trained like oh, that's gonna, yeah. So yeah, the next yeah. time you're still like, oh, why do you like drop? You see guys like, oh, why do you drop from a kick or something? I'm like, let me just kick you in your leg <laughs> yeah. and see how that feels. Okay, <laughs> shit fucking hurts. Uh, yeah. Have you had many injuries? Just um, yeah, I've had a few. Uh, before I started actually fighting, I had two tears in my left knee. So I just had like meniscus and LCL. Nothing like yeah, two, yeah. no operation in that, but like I think it was like grade twos, just like rehabbing that. No. But um, at the start of, um, what was it, COVID, when we had some lockdowns and that, I actually broke my back. So I had, Shit, yeah, I had a break your back? Uh, training injury. So I ended up with like a one mil fracture of either side of my L5. So it was like a two mil up sort of thing. But I was just training and we did a drill where someone shoots at you like a double leg and you let him in and then you start to sprawl. So they have to work to get you down. You have to work to defend. Okay. And then we were doing it and then they shot. And I, well, I thought they were going to shot. So I started to initiate my sprawl and I started dropping with my hips out and my head up like this. And then they faked it. And I was already sort of committing to movement. And then they shot again. And it was just like a freak accident, missed yeah, time. Timing. And then he just... Form and like reverse scorpion to me like so and then oh. i fell off straight away and i was like they're like fuck your neck your neck and i was like i'm fine like i don't want to move yet my neck feels fine but i just like felt something in my back go yeah, and then yeah. i went to um baymed that's how i actually got started with them and they sort of sussed it out and they're like fuck it doesn't so like the way you described the injury like we can take you for a scam but like the way you went there's only like one real thing that happens it pretty much breaks sort of thing so then i went and got the scan yeah, yeah. and then it came back i had the one mil fracture on either side. So that set me out of action for about three and a half, four months almost. So that was shit in a sense. But I was also, I just, there's always a positive to every negative sort of thing. Mm. So that started off as like, oh shit. Like I was like, fuck, I can't train. I can't even run. Like I'm not allowed to like do long walks or anything. Like I was very yeah, limited yeah, yeah. to what I could do. Like I'd start off with stretching, a bit of mobility and that. But slowly but surely I was able to get into more. And then this was when Bulko was in his camp for the second Max Holloway fight. So it was good in a sense because we had 10 boys down when we had to have a bubble to train. Yeah, so yeah. I was able to be a part of that. I couldn't train or anything, but it was good just to sort of keep the motivation high. I was still in the gym twice a day mm. doing rehab and then slowly doing the sessions then when I could in that. Yeah. And then I went through that sort of three, four months with Baymed and then they ended up sort of sponsoring me and that sort of thing. So now I get to like my s and I get looked Beautiful. after there and that. So it's sort of like... It was a shit situation, but a lot of positives yeah, have come, come out, out from it. it. So yeah. now if I have like any nigglies or anything, I go get them sorted out. So like with my back, I still have to do like a sort of stretching and sort of mobility routine. So yep. I try and do that. Like say if I go home this Sabo, so I'm going to have some time to kill. I just sort of stretch it then. So I end up stretching for like around an hour, hour and a bit every day and just sort of stuff like that sort of yep. really helps you stay on top of your body. Like today I wake up for sparring and I saw a shit, but I was like, get moving, foam roll, trigger points, everything like that. You can get the body going. You can really sort of um, find new ways to sort of push part what you think your body is capable of sort of thing. Because like yeah, some days yeah. I wake up, I'm like, fuck, I don't know how I'm going to be able to train in an hour. But then you sort of have like that hot shower, open everything up, stretch, get everything moving. And then you can really sort of push through. And that's what it was a good experience to find. Because before that injury, I never stretched or anything. I would do my practice. I'd cool down. I'd go home. Then I'd go 
lay down on the couch or watch something like that. So it was no, yeah. I wasn't really taking, I was looking after my body nutrition and like physical, like shape wise. Yeah, but yeah. there was a whole other side I was um, neglecting that I never really focused on. And then yeah, as soon yeah. as I started focusing on that, like all aspects improved, like just little things. You can push that little bit harder and train and your body recovers. You can kick that little bit higher. You can defend yeah, that yeah, little yeah. bit quicker. Your body's firing a lot better, which I find. So that's why I think even though it was a shit injury for it to happen and it opened like a whole nother, um pathway of sort of training methods and mm. that that i was just completely oblivious to so yeah. i look at it as just like a good blessing in disguise sort of thing yeah for yeah. sure it's a good thing to learn yeah. isn't it and there's mm. something in that like where you don't actually do the sport physically but you watch it yep. and replay it in it's your like mind osmosis that, as well yep. you know is that the word is it yeah well like if you're round trainers and yeah. all that like, i find that with playing guitar if yeah. i haven't played it in a month i'm actually better than i was anyway, yeah like for time, some reason. time away can yeah, like, improve your skills exactly yeah right yeah, yeah i think so yeah, it was especially like watching just a high level camp like um, Volko, like being there for all the practices, and you're still still there soaking up the knowledge mm. and sort of you're still a part of the crew and that. So pretty much the only thing that's um, missing is the physical part where you can always get that back. But I think as long as you're like mentally still there and that, you can still sort of not fall too far behind. Where I think some yeah. guys do it wrong, where if they get an injury or something, or even after fights, they'll have that fight and they might take two weeks off straight away and not even be in the gym once or something. I feel like what do you do? straight back to the gym yeah so it's been a couple times now where i've i there was one i won my first title belt it was a friday night i did three rounds i went into the gym to spar the next day because the body felt good and then uh another time after i did the three fights in the three days um i fought friday saturday sunday no yeah no thursday friday no it was friday saturday sunday because then i flew back sunday arvo and then i was in the gym for the afternoon class that monday to teach it and everything like that so even like cool. regardless if i'm I'm yeah, yeah. not busy like after a fight or anything unless I have to like do like some with a family or that but if it's five o'clock and I've just had a fight I might as well be at the gym anyway mm. yeah, if I can train I'll train if I can't train hard I'll do light and if I can't do anything because I'm injured I can at least coach or watch the boys and sort of give advice where it's needed I'm still like sort of mentally there yeah, which is yeah. I find the best way to sort of stay on top of it because like I said too many guys will maybe not so much now but old school they would used to do that 12 to 8 week fight camp go off for a month, come back to the 12-day week fight camp, and then a fight camp ends up just sort of getting you back in shape. Whereas if you're just constantly around that environment, you're constantly learning. Mm. That's all I like to do because yeah. I feel like when I'm fighting, the last four or five weeks, I'm really structured towards a certain opponent. But it's that all the other time where I'm not actually structured towards that opponent. I can work on so many things. I'm like, oh, I can't try this because it might not be applicable for this fight. But as soon as this camp's done... I can start trying this new technique, see how it goes, and I can learn that way. Whereas, guy, if you're only there to train for when you got to fight, you're only sort of fighting you're for like one on person. Yeah. Or yeah, 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 exactly right. Yeah. Now, on a different tack, with uh, your twin brother, yeah, do you have any freaky twin things happen? Um, that's that's a good question. Actually, I'm trying to think. Did he break his back on the same day? I wonder. Did yeah. he get a sore back? <laughs> he felt it. He's like, ah, something's <laughs> happened. Something's yeah. wrong. Um, I'm trying. I don't think so too much, really. Eh? Are you, are you identical twins? Uh, we're fraternal, but we do look you pretty do, alike. When, oh, when, okay, yeah. when we were younger, um, if you know us now, you could tell us apart. But if he walked in here now and like it was one at a time, you might not be able to. But yeah. when we were younger, we we're like splitting the images. So yeah. what we used to do at school, we just used to switch classes and stuff like that. Yeah. Wow. Really? Did you? Yeah. That's mad. What, yeah. about, what about girls? Nah, he, he's, <laughs> a, he's a fucking sicker. He's all for that. I'm like, no, I'm like, that's... that's I think there was that's, movies on that. Yeah, yeah I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's dead like... Dead ringers and stuff. Like, yeah. No, nah, I'm like, that's too for you. I'm like... Well, you, remember that Afri there was African marathon runners and they uh, they got caught. They were switching halfway through the marathon. Oh, that's and, a good um, idea. And, and the yeah, toilets yeah. and well, brother yeah, was yeah. there. Fuck, I want him to weigh in for me, eh? Yeah. If, if he wasn't <laughs> covered, it. if he wasn't covered oh. in tattoos, man, he would oh. be, he would weigh in at like he's like fifty eight kilos. So you can't wear like a long sleeve shirt and they're like, hey, you wear, oh, shit. Actually, what you got that, that shirt on for? Fucking it's cold, right there, man. Yeah, yeah, he could weigh in at like <laughs> Get the same six, tattoos, sixty-one man. kilos. I could rock up like seventy-five kilos. Look that completely different person. Like I just I rehydrated. <laughs> really well eh? yeah. <laughs> just do it that way uh, so what got you into fighting like just on another note like because there's when you think of a fighter yeah usually it's some rough guy that's and you don't seem to be this you <laughs> know what rough, i mean intimidating and, guy and eh? i'm saying so, like the same with mark yeah no, he, mark, well, he, mark had, had a he had like a hard childhood yeah and i'm just wondering well he was bullied a bit wasn't he he was yeah yeah, yeah. so i'm just wondering if like what got you into 
Like just the fighting with your brother, like majority of it. What there's always, I feel like most kids always get. I don't know about it now, but I feel like every kid goes through like some sort of stage of bullying and that. So there was obviously yeah. like little bits of bullying and that involved, but I was always just one to sort of stand up for myself. So it wasn't like I got bullied. I needed martial arts. Like I was oh, yeah, standing yeah. up for myself before I even knew how to proper punch in that. It was just sort of in my my sort of nature and style of that. And my dad always used to say, "Is like don't let anybody put anything over you," sort mm. of thing. So when we started, we were both playing footy and wrestling. And I think it was pretty much due to just being an like, extremely competitive person. Like, prime example, like, I had my sparring today. Like, I felt all right sparring, but it was nowhere near my best. Mm. And so, like, after I was just, like, cut, I'm like, fuck, like, I'm just always hyper competitive. I'm trying to win every little thing I can sort of thing. So then it's not so much that the sport... It's not so much I'm looking at, like, sport as a fight. Like, oh, my God, I'm in a fist fight. It's panicking. It's like, I'm in a competition. So I'm here, I have to sort yeah, of look yeah, at it yeah. in that sort yeah. of aspect. So even when I was wrestling, I was always competitive. Playing footy, I was a center. Obviously, this was like juniors and that, but prime example, like if they had like a four and two overlap and they would get in on like my center side or ever pass me in the wing and the boys just start having a go at me. Like age nine, 10, I'm telling them to fuck off. I'm like, <laughs> man, it's not my fault. You left, like you let it happen. Like yeah, just right. always competitive. Like and yeah, it's yeah. just that sort of competitive drive, which sort of led me to competing and then, from there, I was competing in jiu-jitsu. I started yeah. competing nationally and stuff like that. And I was like, could just always try and find the next big challenge. And with MMA, it was like, okay, I'll have a few amateur fights, try and get some amateur titles. Same thing now, I'm professional. I'm just yeah, competitive yeah. with it. I want to have a few amateur, uh, have a few pro fights, start getting the belt, start fighting international and just slowly work my way up that competitive scene and just sort of test myself throughout it, whole sort of thing. So there's not like a whole lot of um, astringent, What's the word they use? Extrinsic motivation or whatever? Like it's yeah, a lot, yeah. well, a lot of my sort of stuff's like just internally, like it's pretty much me versus me. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. a, com- you there's want to another, push yourself. yeah, there's another person there. There's I'm nothing fighting. external e- pushing Exactly you. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 there's nothing there like, oh, I want to do this to prove this to this person. Yeah, like yeah. Everything I'm doing is trying to like, it's just prove, your mind Exactly how right, you prove think. myself, yeah. like I'm the best and prove it to myself. And like, it's not so much like, even a good example with um, the sparring because we get like all our sessions in that film. So once we get it, I'll watch it back. And it's not so much about me doing all these different things to the guys that I couldn't do last week. It's just about me performing better than I did this week. Yeah. So it's just that constant growth and evolution I'm sort of looking after. And I find yeah. if I can sort of get in tune with that, everything else happens because then if I want to perform better, I'm going to eat better. Mm. want to eat better, I'm going to get better yeah, sleep. Yeah. I want to look after my body better. It's sort of just that chain effect. It all works in sequence and it's just all sort of leading and just sort of just whatever yeah. competition I have ahead. So I'm someone who's like highly fueled by like competition sort of thing. That's like my main drive for it personally. Yeah. 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 The, um, you know how you're saying you got the back injury and it yep. helped, uh, uh, kind of reset you. Yeah. Well, have you done meditation or anything like that? Like as in to get the mind, you say you got the body part Yeah, so I, I'm big in um, meditation. So... So oh, are you really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So yeah. I'm not, um, yes, I go through stages. Right now, my favorite way is just sort of doing like that box breathing and that. So I just do like hold for four, um, in for four, out for four, and just that sort of like, I do sort of breathing techniques like that. Oh, man, I, I, I've been doing the Wim Hof stuff yeah, for a yeah. while now. I fucking love, love it, Love it, yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, I love it. It just yeah. sort of calms your mind and that. But I do a few, so I normally do like some breathing and stuff like that, especially like, um, leading into fights and that, I find it's good to sort of really calm yourself yeah, down. Yeah, and yeah, Center even, yourself. Yeah, or something. visualization. What I like to do is I actually like to hype myself up and sort of get them pre-fight um, jitters, like get that same sort of like back of your neck, yeah, you know, sort of stomach yeah. feeling butterflies, and then I sort of like to visualize through there. So it's sort oh, okay. of... So you actually want that feeling? Yeah, I want that because yeah. I want to get familiar with it because the last thing yeah, I want... Yeah, yeah, that's right. I feel my first fights, I'm like, fuck, like, I'm nervous. I'm yeah, like, I don't and know. especially when you get bigger yeah. and bigger, there's cameras and exactly shit on you right. and stuff. But then if I can yeah. sit down in my room and sort of, like, get my body going, like, okay, I feel like I'm in a fight, yeah, then visually yeah. I can just go my way through it. I find the helps with the nerves and that a lot. Funny, as you get older, that that feeling, you know, like you're, you're at school and someone's downtrailed you or something yep. like that, I actually like that feeling, you know, like actually yeah, that, yeah. that's the part where you feel alive, man. Yeah, it's, it's like, like something's, something's happening. happening. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's it's going to start. Yeah, you want, I, I've, I find myself trying to seek that out more yeah. and more, you know. Yeah, I love it. But even just little things too, like um, I, I, some, I like a lot of walking in that too. I live like in a nice area down near Lake Laura sort of thing. Oh, beautiful. So I just yeah. chuck on like good tunes and I just walk like down on the water 30 minutes and like, it's sort of not so much meditation in a sense, but I don't have to think. I can just be like sort of free and it's just that sort of real like revitalizing. If I do want to sort of think about things, I can as well. But yeah, it's yeah. not so much. I feel like too many people, they're too worried about being like, 
constantly stimulated with everything. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't mind sort of taking that time to disconnect. If I want to sit down, work on some breathing, go through my thoughts. If I want to relax, I can chuck on some good tunes, just go walk down to the beach or something and sort of meditate that way. And I find that way sort of like is the best way for me to sort of keep my mind clear and sort of focus on what I need to do. Yeah, that well, sounds your lo- great. Your whole life's like this, isn't it? Exactly you know, right. Like the training and everything. Like yeah. you got to be on the ball. And with, with your fight, so you got this one coming up, yep. July 17th, was yep, it? Yep, 17th. Up in the GC. We just got back from the GC. Yeah. Got to love the GC. It's a good place, <laughs> eh? It's, it's not a, bad. It's a funny Scratch place. The surface, it's the surface. But. The surface <laughs> I lived there when I first came over. It was the first place I lived because I'm from New Zealand originally. Yep. Yeah, man. It was a good place for, for a 22-year-old. Oh, man. Yeah, Imagine being 21 in Vegas for three months. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't imagine. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. But so, have you got? Um, is it one one game at a time, one fight at a time, or you got other things lined up already? Uh, yeah, no. For me, I just prefer to be one fight at a time. Obviously, you got like champions of divisions and everything like that. But yeah. I think I don't think too many guys overlook the person in front of them. I feel. Yeah. Fair so, enough. Yeah. And then I'm always the way I train is like I said, like for sort of last four weeks or so, we sort of catered towards the one person. But I'm constantly evolving. I find if you're too focused on what everyone else is doing, you can't really focus enough That's on right, yourself yeah. and that. And, and that focusing on what you've done before anyway. So mm, you kind exactly of need right. to bring something else to the, to the Stay table. Stay fresh in that. Yeah, the, yeah. Way, like I always, the way I look at it is I just want to be able to sort of like, sounds weird, but like beat myself up last week. Just constantly be able to like, oh, so that was what level I was at last week. I want to be better than that. If we yeah, were yeah. to fight today, like this Colby now versus Colby last Saturday, I want to be able to kick his ass sort of thing. Yeah. I want to make sure I make them constant improvements. And yeah, that, yeah, for sure. Realistically, I could be like, I could set that goal at someone else, but I don't know the situations. They might have a good day. They might have a bad day. Then it's sort of, you can't really gauge it off. But if I can sort of always just gauge my progression off, off me you. versus myself, I yeah, find yeah. that's the sort of best way to sort Little of step, move so. forward with it exactly right. Do you read a bit? I love reading. Yeah, man. Yeah. Rob, yeah. What are you reading at the moment? What am I reading at the moment? Um, it's called The Pack by Cody Garber and it's his book. Oh, but yeah. I, re- I read um, all different genres. Like I just finished um, Fingerprints of a God by Graham Hitchcock. Oh, oh fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. awesome. That's a really good book. Isn't yeah. that, man? It's yeah. pretty, pretty ear. I listened to it. So okay, yeah, nice. Pretty ear opening, man. Yeah. But yeah, I love all of them. Like um, what else? Some of my, my favorite book's probably The Alchemist. The Alchemist. Was, what's his, is what's his name? Who's that? Paulo Cozy or... Oh. I've read The Alchemist. I'm yeah. just trying to remember it. Um, it's about the, pers- the boy who goes through like a personal journey through like, um, I'm pretty sure it's Egypt and that. And like just it's like a self-discovery sort of Isn't it like book. a Bible day? The Zo- not the Zoroastrians. The, the fuck starts with B. Uh, Bible. <laughs> no. He's a, it was a, oh, no, I'm thinking of The Prophet. No. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Um, but I have read The Alchemist as well years yeah. ago. That's good. Like that, the power of now, like I'm not so much into them. Uh, when I first started reading, because I used to read a lot of um, fiction as a kid, like I just always was into it sort of thing as like yeah. a hobby and that. Yeah, and yeah. then as I started getting older, it was more into like the sort of self-help and like spirituality and that. And now it's sort of just like um, a lot of autobiographies and that. But sort of different people like Richard Branson's had a good one. Um who else? David Goggins is probably up there. Like, oh, like everyone loves Can't hurt me, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, Jordan good. Peterson's books, like Mark, the Mark Manson's. Like there's a lot of sort of any genre I feel like I could sort of benefit from and learn something. I'll yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, give it a read sort of thing. That's yeah. a good outlook. Because yeah. I think, especially with Peterson, he cops a flogging on this thing. He does. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's a little bit of it. Nah, I don't, yeah, a little bit of a flogging. He's all right, though. I don't mind. You know? Well, I think it's all... You know, you can't in life you go along, man. You can't have one reality, exactly reality right. tunnel. You need to have yeah. all these different view, viewing points yeah. all around you, and then you make up your own mind, you know. Yeah. And he's definitely got a viewing point, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and I have got things off him, and yeah. you know, but I think if you have. If you agree with someone else in the world 100%, what's the point in you? Exactly right. You, you know, exactly like, right. you've yeah. got to take yeah. the things you agree with. That's right. You need yeah. pieces of everything. Pieces of everything. everything. You make your own shit up, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure you get that with your training, you know? Yeah, exactly like, right. You're taking pieces from everywhere. Every, yeah, you can learn from everything sort of thing. Yeah. But that's like a good point you were saying, whereas um, you sort of can't agree with anyone 100%. Nah. Because even me, like, I, I read books on people I don't like, purely just yeah, to see if I can get, like, a better understanding of their perspective well, that's, that's and that sort of That's a good way, yeah. And you'll normally yeah. find one thing they do or have done that you 
disagree with. Yeah, like I used yeah. to disagree, and then I sort of I actually understand their perspective, and I change my views. I'm like, oh, it's actually like a different way of thinking. It's just not wrong. Mm. It's just different to uh, what yeah, I was used to, right. sort of thing. Yeah, and cultures are like that as well. You know, yep. it's like the way the Chinese. You know, China's on a nose net now, but that's got a different culture. Exactly right. You know, and it works for them, and they're not trying to make us Chinese or anything. You know, like well, it's you you put it well the other day. Like you said, they have haven't invaded anyone, and it turns out, yeah, two thousand years they've never invaded. Anyway. And fuck, I don't even know. We've that. even invaded. Invaded. Fucking not long We're ago. We're here from getting invaded. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. That's true. So yeah, two thousand years. All they did is build a fucking big wall. Yeah. Mm. You know. So that's their type of men. They were never really invaders and all that. And I don't think they are now, man. There's just an issue. What, what's happening? I think it's, it's the Yanks are really worried about being what, on the way out. You think? Being on the way out, and China yeah. just wants to do business. And but the thing is, they do it really, really fucking well. Mm. Yeah. You know? yeah. So exactly right. The only way you're really going to compete. Yeah. Um, well, you're not going to compete that way, you know. No. So, um, there's something else. I wonder if uh, MMA is big over in China, man. It's one and a half billion it, people it over is, there. Oh, man. it wasn't too big beforehand, but now they got uh, like the Performance Institute they have in Vegas. They have the Performance Institute in Shanghai. Shit, wow. And they got a few sort of fighters that have come up. And I think the big thing that sort of uh, made it a lot more popular was when Wei Li Zhang won the belt. Yeah. So I think she was the first sort of ever Chinese fighter to get the UFC gold. Oh, so that sort that of really yeah, yeah, boosted it. it up so there. now I'm pretty sure they got an academy there where like the Chinese fighters and that they can live there um, full time. So yeah, they yeah. live there every live on site. Their training's catered, nutrition, It'd everything. Be interesting. What, did they take the the kung fu aspect? You know, they've got a, their own martial art history in China. Do they add? Do you think they add that to the MMA? Um, I think uh, a lot of the guys there, they might start off tradi- with traditional martial arts and that, but then yeah. I think eventually when you do transfer to MMA, you've got to sort of realise like what works and what doesn't work and that sort yeah. of thing. Like the Wing Chun stuff yeah. just didn't really work. No. Did it, like, it's good for like the culture and everything like that they have over there, but actually trying to apply it to like a legitimate competitive fight sort of thing, it's sort of different aspects sort of thing. Like it might be good for your sort of nan to do at a park and a group and that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, try yeah. and bust it out against a pro fighter in an MMA <laughs> cage, not going to go too well i think i think there's a video actually about that oh is that old mate when yeah. he tries to fuck the punches <laughs> yeah, over? Yeah. Up. yeah he just cops like 10 in a yeah. row yeah he's like, oh, oh we'll catch that yeah i think he says he'll catch it with his chi but <laughs> yeah. catch it with my chin yeah, yeah. That, that's what he was trying to say yeah. <laughs> it was like that guy who went around and exposed a lot of a well not exposed he just fought the against the traditional martial arts i could sort of it was a weird thing to do because like i get it like you obviously want to prove your point that you're better than, but I think he went about the wrong way. Where he'd go out to challenge gyms and everything, and yeah. because it was like such a cultural thing over there, they ended up like, um, what was it? Okay, stripping his like social status and everything. Oh, so this wow. bloke like can't find anywhere to live. Like he can't travel public oh, transport. No. Like his cards, all because he'd go around filming himself to like gyms and like challenging masters and that, and they showed us like a massive disrespect and they just. Wiped him, sort of thing. Is that in wow. China? Uh, I think so. Yes, yeah, so I may be wrong, yeah, but it was yeah. some like China, Asia, or something thing. like that. Yeah, and they just yeah, they ruined his life. Yeah, off you it pretty can't much. even catch a fucking bus. Yeah, if you fuck with him. Yeah, legit, like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, fuck. He sort of like, I feel bad for the bloke, but I was like, then again, like he had done it once and he sort of proved his point, but then he sort of made his kept on made yeah. it like his gimmick, yeah. like I'm challenging all these traditional masters and that sort of thing. It's well, like, there was an old guy. We've spoken about him before. The old. I think it was during World War Two, or just after a guy called Masayama, who's a Japanese guy. The guy used to kill bulls with one mm. punch, and he actually went to Thailand and took on the Thai champs and all that. And they they always got their ass kicked when they went over there, and he actually won. He was the only karate guy to oh, nice. you know, well, if you, yeah. killing the, bulls with a punch. You probably yeah. got a lot of yeah, you got a lot of force and power there. <laughs> hey. You got to get your timing right, man. Yeah, Evidently, yeah. there's a soft spot right in the middle of the head or some <laughs> shit. Who's the, who's the guy that was on YouTube and he was going? And just saying, do you want to fight? Like, we'll just have some sparring, and then he'd just fucking unload on Was him. it that boxer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know who you're talking about. He claims to be like 100 and, oh. Like 101 wins or something. Yeah. And then he fights a, a 16-year-old in a gym, and he just, this guy can actually box. So and bashes him? Yeah. Yeah. And he's chasing him out of the ring. And that. Oh, yeah, I, I saw that, that I know one. that guy, yeah, that guy who you're talking fuck about. Like, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. was it Charlie Zeloff or something like that? Yeah, yeah. like guys weren't even yeah. put, they were just putting their gloves and on. And he started hitting them and shit. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I, I think he's like Is he slow or something He must be Cause like he He seems a bit He does this like yeah, a gimmick sort of thing But like I think he, he can't mentally be all there No And then the I remember the The 16 year old That actually could beat him Yeah He um 
He's like, no, no, I'm all done. And then he tried to like sneak punch. Yeah, sneak punch. He does yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that. He's like, he'll cover up. He's like, done. And then we yeah. start unloading yeah, yeah. in that. Yeah. The guy chased him out of Germany. He yeah. was standing around saying, fucking get him, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he sought him out. Uh, fuck. Yeah, good stuff. Everywhere. Hey, man. Well, that was great. Thanks for coming on, bro. Thank you very much for having yeah. me, boys. I appreciate it. Cheers. That was good. Good yeah, chat. That was a great chat, man. We'll definitely be following what's going on. Legend. We'll get you back in, man. Sounds good. Post yeah. victory. Post yeah. victory. Yeah, Fingers crossed, COVID finger. doesn't fuck this up. Yeah, so uh, can people watch it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you want to watch it, it will be on UFC Fight Pass. Wow. Well, cool, man. We'll, yep. we'll definitely yeah, channel 61. And they can check you out on Instagram. Instagram, at Colby Thickness. I've got a Facebook page too, at Colby Thickness. Well, we'll, add, we'll add. At Tinder, so. it's at Colby Thickness, just swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Grinder? Nah, none of that, mate. Just the Tinder. <laughs> at Freestyle Fighter Gym. Yeah, Freestyle Fighting Gym. Joe Lopez, Alex Volkanovsky, head coaches. Yeah, Baymed, Strength and um, Performance looking after me elite sub show harbor looking after me eddie's barbershop show harbor fight dietitian <laughs> all the boys awesome. looking after me. Yeah, got a good crew behind me I reckon. It's good. yeah that's Only great way to victory exactly right Fuck covid you've already had it anyway what's the issue exactly yeah. that's what i'm like i've been walking around without a mask and i'm like i'm realistically like i don't i can't get it again you can't yeah i wonder what the spreading thing i like. think apparently having covid is like being fully vaccinated Fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, wow. sweet. Natural you can't vaccine. beat that then. Nah. Nah. Well, man, good. We'll see you after the 17th, man. Legends. Right. Appreciate it. Sweet, bro. Sweet.